a playlist original. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Back to the Blockbuster with your host, Gaius and Jackson. Uh, happy uh, San Diego Comic Con recovery day, uh, at least for half of us. For you, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait. I know we <laughs> chatted briefly, but for both myself and the listeners today, uh, we're going to get the first hand account of your experience over there where you spent five days uh, at Comic Con. And I cannot wait because your Instagram was full of stories. It looked amazing. Some great news came out of there, but. Yeah. Um, been waiting for the episode to hear about your actual uh, experience there. So without further ado, let yeah, us know yeah. how it was for you. So I, I've been going since 2018, I think. Uh, okay. then there was that, then there's like, you know, the COVID gap. So there was like the, I think 2020 was when I didn't go cause they didn't have it and they did it online and that was oh, a boy. disaster. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I, I got, no, actually, no, I'm lying. So 2017 was when I first went cause I went three years in a row and then there was the gap. So it did was they do a, it twenty twenty one though. Uh, they did not. It was another oh, okay. uh, another gap year. So they so there was a they had a thing in November, I believe, that was like they did like a light kind of. Uh, they limited the amount of people that could go, and it wasn't like a full thing. And it was right before Thanksgiving, which is another. Oh, uh, I think it was a, I think it was a week of Thanksgiving. Where I was like, well, that's a silly time to hold it. Uh, but whatever. Uh, and then they came back in twenty twenty two, and that was that was a fun one to go to because everyone was just excited to go back. And then, of course, last year the strikes happened, and it was still held, but no one really, you know, at least, uh, you know, Network TV and uh, Netflix Studios, they didn't really attend it because actors couldn't promote anything during the strike. So this was uh, it, it back to normal again after being like uh, handicapped by COVID and then the strike. And um, I think the atmosphere in the air was that everyone was just excited to go back after it not being 100% last year. Um, I think I told you, um, according to their official uh, X page, they said 136,000 plus were in it were in attendance over the five days. Um, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of foot traffic. Crazy. Um, uh, yeah, it's a it's a very crazy busy event, and you have to really uh, know how to navigate it. I was actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna tread lightly on the sex part. I was with I was paired with someone. From the outlet that um, I w- I went for, not for Movie Web, I went for another outlet. However, okay. fun thing about fun thing about Movie Web, they knew that some of us were going, so they only got Movie Web was like, I guess last year when there was a strike, uh, you know, Comic Con, they didn't really uh, submit for a lot of passes, so they weren't sure how what the response was going to be this year, and then they then they got noticed that Marvel was going to be there, so I they were like, hey, we didn't get passes for this, but if anyone's going. Um, if you happen to be like at any of these panels, just if you could send us information. So I got like a private message from my editor and he was like, Hey, if you're in a panel and you get any info, just send it this way. We'll definitely hook you up. You don't have to write a story for us, but like we right. have someone else, write. We'll have someone else write it. Just send us the info. So while I was paid to go by one outlet, I was also paid to, uh, <laughs> funnel information to Ooh, another look outlet, at you uh, double dipping was, that's awesome which was which was great because i i wasn't breaking rules i wasn't writing stories for movie web i wasn't like right. writing a story for one outlet and then just scratching their back a little so, bit yeah yeah and it worked out pretty well for them and and then they had two other people that happened to be going there so um between the three of us we were just sending stuff to them and i mean we were on this like the slack message group and i could see it going off i, I would send <laughs> Like, all right, this is what they're saying at the boys panel. And then like you just hear messages, right? Who can write it? And, and then and then like they're like, I got it. And then like someone's like, Well, I want it. And they're like, Well, someone just grab it. <laughs> and so like they were like trying to just going back and forth okay. to see who could get, get these stories out on time. So what did you get to attend and see? Because I, I, I go, saw a good chunk of your stories, but I wasn't available to see everything you'd posted. And I'm honestly kind of wondering myself, what were the highlights, I suppose, and then what else did you get to see? So I and I try and I did my best to I think for everyone that it follows G rolls and back to the blockbuster I actually was going back and forth posting on G rolls page and then going back to back to blockbuster and posting it on that story page so that it would also see that traffic too mm-hmm. um, so it was a lot of like switching back and forth between <laughs> a bunch of social media channels trying to make sure that everything got on there. Um, so it was a good weekend for uh, us too, actually. I I met a lot of cool people and networked a lot of cool people. We had a lot nice. of people that a lot more people that follow the podcast now because of that. Um, 
uh, which was really cool. Um, Great job. <laughs> they uh, they they were high when I was like, yeah, it's me and my buddy Jackson that run. They were like, well, where is he? I was like, oh, the long story. We <laughs> he lives on the other like, side of the continent. Uh, I was like, we don't even live in the same city. <laughs> uh, I don't say like, he's far, far away. And then mm-hmm. once I explained that to them, like, it's so funny that that intrigues people a lot. Yeah, it seems to be a I, hook, eh? Yeah, and I'm not, and I'm not, and I know we're not the only podcast that has that where, you know, the people who host it are not in the same location, but like, right. Um, I guess, like, so I would, I, on the Wednesday, I ran into some people and like gave, shared the podcast with them. And the next day, I, we met up again and they had listened to a few episodes. And that was one of the first things they kept saying. They were like, oh, that's so crazy that you guys aren't even like <laughs> around each other. Like, you got, you guys don't hang out as friends. Um, but I was like, man, you don't have to like hang out as friends to be friends, I guess. I mean, yeah, like, no, exactly. Uh, I mean, I, <laughs> this is probably a lot of what we'd be doing if we were hanging out anyway, is talking yeah. movies, talking the shit yeah. that we love, right? So, yeah, I guess testament to us for making this work, <laughs> considering all the the distance and whatnot. But. Yeah. Um, as far as the things I uh, so Friday was like the big day. I mean, Wednesday is preview night, so you're it's at your own discretion to do whatever you want. You can kind of walk the convention floor and kind of get an lay of the land basically see the okay. things that you, you know find out where stuff is so you're like and that's kind of what we did uh this guy ben who actually met at comic-con in 2022 um he actually went uh, uh this year as well and we met up and as soon as we met up there we basically walked uh the whole site so the whole convention center and it's a lot of walking i posted my steps on uh my story it was a lot of walking even on day one um, just trying to find out where stuff is and like getting maps and like you know you have to you really have to schedule out your day. Oh, big so time! You can, so you can try to make as much as you can possibly make. Um, and then Thursday, a lot of like some of that was like prep for work for Friday. So that's what I was doing in the beginning part of the day, and then I had the rest of my day to enjoy it. We did all the stuff on Thursday was like a lot of the offsite stuff. So Paramount had like a lodge that they set up in, in the Gas Lab District. That was all themed for their shows. So they had like a Dexter original sin section of the, of yes. the party that, that they had. Um, Saw some of that on online. Interesting yeah, they, stuff came out of that panel. Yeah, yeah. They had an uh, yeah, and man, I, everyone knows how much I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And <laughs> yeah. she moderated the Dexter Original Sin panel, but it was at the same time as Alien Romulus, and I chose oh, to go no. uh, to be there with Alien Romulus. Uh so that was a uh, not a bummer. No, no, not a bummer. Uh, no, you got some cool swag from yeah, that too. I, actually, I did. I did. That was that was great. But you know, when I first heard that, I was like, "Oh, Buffy's going to be there. That'd be awesome to see that." No doubt. And, and, yeah. and, and I look at the schedule, and I was like, "It's at the exact same time." And Man. if I was to ask the outlet, like, "Oh, which one do you want?" They weren't going to say Dexter Original Sin because it's not even out yet. <laughs> right. So there's very little hype from that. Uh, uh, but yeah, that's it, a sacrifice for sure. I did. I did. Um, and then the Paramount Lodge also had like an if station set set up from that imaginary friend movie with uh ryan <laughs> Real, i didn't really do anything in there because there was a lot of kids because it is a kid event too a lot of kids okay go. yeah so no a day. lot of kids were oh it was weird because at the paramount lounge that that stuff was up for kids but then there was like a tulsa king theme bar it was like that show that special yeah. was on there was a bar right next to it where people were getting absolutely like sloshed like right next to this like oh interesting. Gig session <laughs> which is also bizarre and then there was um a place to get like these like Star Trek shirts done. I got one. I'm never gonna wear it in public. I'll probably just wear it to bed. But it was but it was, but it was free. Uh, I got then, lots of bed nighttime shirts too that I'll never wear anywhere else. Uh, yeah, and then uh, you know Everyone there was another Sponge, SpongeBob SquarePants like uh, activity where you could like win prizes, and we did that. It was it was interesting being in there as an adult with also a bunch of ki- a bunch of kids. Yeah. Uh, winning kid prizes whatever um there was some stuffed animals i won there that i brought home to the dog so that was oh nice that, that, that was nice. To chew up yeah so we did that on thursday we also did fx had like an installation there that was really cool they did like it's almost like tower of terror american horror story themed uh, oh, ele- elevator thing that was really fun um not scary to me but scary to some people that were in it um <laughs> Because the whole time I'm in it, you can tell that the thing's not really like going up and down. Like you're not really moving up a level or down a level. It's giving you the illusion that you are. But some of the right. people in it were like convinced we were free falling, and <laughs> wasn't. Okay. And 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 uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, they had this whole presentation for the bear at the FX thing that was pretty cool. Uh, we thought we were getting food because it was like stuff wrapped up. It looked like a sandwich or like a burrito. And me and my buddy were so hungry at that point. Oh. 
I was like, oh, they're giving us free food. That's so cool. And then like they give it to us and you exit and I open it up and then it was just an apron that had the bear on it that was wrapped <laughs> up in, and then he had like and then he got like a t-shirt. And then okay, they had like that's another, pretty cool though. They had another one for what we do in the shadows. They they made like I don't watch that show, but um they did our names on the umbrella and like signature writing from the show. And then I guess there's certain characters that have different symbols like lightning bolt and the different things like that. So they designed our own umbrellas from like different character pieces from the show. Um, and that's that was Taika Waititi's like, it... show, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hear really good things about it. That's really funny. And then they did one for Borderlands, which is another, it was another bar theme one. Uh, there was a dunk. I didn't get to take pictures of this because uh, my phone was dying at this time and I had to go off and charge it. That's another thing. Bring a portable charger for your portable charger if you ever. Uh, <laughs> if wow, you ever really? Yeah, it's a lot. Like, because you're not, you're not in your room for like hours. So like, you can't, there are charging stations, but like you have to, like I said, stationary. Your, yeah. yeah, playing your time. So I did that for a little bit. There was a ducky contest. I won a prize for like ducking a guy uh, in the water. Oh, they gave, some, they gave us some Borderlands stuff. They actually gave us a ticket to go see Borderlands. Uh, for but I, I'm going to give that away because I see movies for free anyway. So I'll, right. I'll find I'll find someone to give it to. Um. So and then there was another. Oh, and there was like a penguin. Uh. Uh. uh theme party for the show okay they did they did at one of the hotels that was actually really cool they gave out posters for the show um they designed the hotel i guess it's supposed to be like kind of like oswald's kind of like layer not literally layer like almost like a club i like the iceberg uh, lounge oh okay that's awesome that was really cool and they gave out some really cool swag for that i for, i did take pictures of it but i forgot to post but there was a lot of cool stuff for, for that on thursday so that was all the stuff we did thursday it was like a lot of like the off-site installations and then friday uh the first panel we went to uh 10 o'clock in the morning was the boys and that was a lot of fun cast was really fun yeah i saw um, your footage of that you can tell that they're like an irreverent bunch uh they they look like they get along really well i mean that's like the cool thing like they definitely have a camaraderie down anthony star was it was hard to the, for, like the moderator was jeffrey d morgan oh uh, okay cool because he's on he's on this season and like he he you could tell like when an actor is moderating that they're not really trained to be a moderator. They're just kind of like, yeah. Just, and yeah, like Andy yeah. Star, yeah, Andy Star wouldn't like let him, like they were just razzing each other. And there's a lot of, you know, back and forth about that. Do you watch that uh, show by the way? I do. Oh, yeah. I okay. love the boys. Yeah. I you? haven't yet seen the finale for season four. That's on the docket for tomorrow. Uh, unfortunately oh, nice. I've had some stuff spoiled from the episode just because the internet, you know, holds no bars, but yep, nope. uh, yeah, I, I actually wasn't sure. Cause I don't think we ever chat that show, but yeah, love the boys. I'm just one episode away from being caught up sadly. Yeah. But, yeah. I okay. love it. That's cool um, to see I, them. I know like season four got a mixed reaction from some critics, but I've enjoyed it for the most part. Um, I've liked it. I, I will agree. I thought it had a slow start, but I've been really yep. liking the ride. So, and I know that yep. the final episode seemed like a, pretty crazy time so i'm excited to be caught up tomorrow but anyway i just had to yeah. get that out there well but i guess it's good that you weren't title. in the room because because they would they spoiled a lot of the they talked about the finale a lot so that's probably good that you weren't right privy to that information definitely already. um they did reveal that jensen eckles is going to come back as soldier boy he's going to be a series regular in season five uh oh which, awesome uh, and that yeah. and the spinoff and, prequel, and right? they're doing, yeah Vought rising they're doing a prequel uh i love the sound of that uh, so he's going to be on that. And I think her name is Ava Cash. She was the villain in season two. Uh, yep. She's going to be his co-star on that. So that'll be really fun. Uh, she was a fun character in season two. I really liked her yes. a lot. And I guess we'll um, kind of see her in a different light. Cause like before she's Stormfront, she's uh Vic, Vic is it victory? Liberty. Yeah. Liberty. Liberty, Liberty, yeah. Liberty uh, in the 50. So I'm excited to see her take on that. Yeah. yeah. So that'll be fun. Um, they didn't really have a lot to talk about with season five. They said they they've been in the writers' room for the last two months. They're still kind of cooking it up. It is the final season, uh, so they are they are oh, uh, official. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they are uh, acutely aware that they want to give everyone a proper ending. But uh, Eric, who, who created the show, said that it's going to be like their version of like the apocalypse. They do know that, so like it's going to oh, be a very my God. like yeah so they oh, big big expectations out of that final season yeah but it's cool that they have all these like spinoffs that they're doing and like they showed us uh footage for season two of gen v which looks pretty good um they did address i forget the uh, i'm free the actor's name who uh passed away but yeah I, do know, I know who you mean i do i do know that they're not recasting that role or uh oh. do anything with it so like uh they're gonna leave that you know legacy where it was and uh not try to uh get someone else to play the part um, but the footage looked really cool. 
uh, Chance from... Chance Perdomo. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So the footage look really great, uh, and they're. I mean, I think they're excited. I think, and they, you know, they said with like the spinoffs and stuff, they show that Chase Crawford is going to be on at least an episode of uh, season two of Gen V. So at least with the spinoffs, there's opportunities for some of the original cast to pop up and make appearances. But it is interesting, um, you know, with one show potentially ending with season five, they have like these new shows that are going right. to come in uh, and take over. So they'll be really cool to see. Um, the next few shows, I don't watch at all, but Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power had a panel right after this. Okay. Um, interesting. Cast was, cast was fun. The footage they showed was fun. I've never watched the show. I've heard not so great things about season one, but the season two footage they showed was really good. I, okay. I was, I, I thought it looked at least interesting. And it's always interesting to hear about like when the actors talk, talk about the show so passionately. Uh, right. You know, I couldn't tell in the room how many fans of the show there were because honestly, whenever they show footage, everyone's going to cheer and clap. Right. It's just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's what you do. <laughs> but I, I do, I do think the, the creators were aware of uh, the, the issues that certain people have with season one, and they seem to be wanting to rectify them with uh, season two, at least. Um, so there's that. And um, after them, uh, there was two Walking Dead shows, other shows I don't watch. Man, so uh, I don't know yeah. what that universe is saying right now. So Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon, The Book of Carol, I guess that's going, that's his second season, and they're bringing back Carol from like The Walking Dead, and Norman Reedus is the guy who plays Daryl Dixon yes. on The Walking Dead. Great so character he had, in that show. So, so, uh, so he's going to be reunited with Carol in season two. They were both... Norman Reedus is hilarious, by the way. Yeah. Uh, uh, a lot, I guess on the back of their cards at the panels, it says, like, please watch your language because there are people under the age of, like, 18 at these panels. So, like, and so he kept dropping F-bombs and, and he <laughs> turned... And, like, so he, he could see the back of his car because in the front of his car is his name. And he's, like, reading it. And he's like, I feel like this is only here for me. Does anyone else have this written on the back of their card? <laughs> need to watch what they say. Um, yeah, you know, they all seem fun. It's just shows I don't watch. I guess they, yeah, there was, like, another Walking Dead show. I think it's called Dead City. Uh, I, with, I haven't even heard of that with, one. With Lauren Cohen, who was on The Walking Dead, and yep. Jeffrey D. And Jeffrey D. Morgan, and he's on that show too. He was another one that was dropping f bombs. They have to watch his language for her children during their panel, but they were all like really interesting things to listen to. Even though I didn't watch the shows at all, like they like they were taught like Lauren Cohen in particular talked so passionately about The Walking Dead: Dead City that I almost wanted to watch it. Okay. <laughs> did you ever watch the main show when it was hot back in the day? I did in the like I didn't finish it. I did watch it like the first few seasons of it and then fell Same. off. Same. I like the first six or seven and I loved it when it was at its the top of the game, but like just went on forever too long. Yeah. I don't even yeah. recognize that you walk yeah. in universe anymore. Uh there was a Doctor Who panel. I don't watch that either, but they seem pretty fun as well. Um and then before Alien Romulus, there was a directors on directors showcase. Oh, cool! Which was Antoine Fuqua and Roland Emmerich, who wow, okay, seemed like a really odd pair. To yeah, be with um, for sure. But they were both really funny. Like Roland Emmerich is very, very German, like very, very, <laughs> and like yeah, and, and I love like the what I got from his discussion was that like he could care less about what critics thinks about his movies. Like he knows what movies he wants to make. You know, this is a guy That's that important. did like. This guy that made Independence Day and the day after tomorrow, like he is like the king of like disaster movies. Yes. Um, also made Stargate and uh some other stuff. And then of course Antoine Fuqua, I would think was a more prestigious director compared to the two of them having done For like sure. training day South Paul and like you know, a bunch of other stuff. But they had a really good discussion about directing and about um what they bring to the table. And I thought it was interesting. There was stuff I didn't even know. Uh they asked Antoine Fuqua what was a movie of his that he was attached to that got away from him that you know was taken away from him or you know it fell apart and he said that he was a, a week away from fully prepping american gangster um before Whoa, ridley scott and, took it and i guess it had another title he's like i can't remember the title but he was the one that came up with the title for american gangster um and he was cool. the one that got Denzel washington to do it uh but he did not have russell crowe in mind he had benicio del toro in mind for the russell crowe oh. part and I oh, guess like the, that would have been. I guess the studio didn't want to give him the money that he wanted to to make it, and and he had to let that go. And then he was like, but he's like, well, what can you do? Really, Scott comes in, he does it. He's like, I have nothing against him. He's a great director. I can't be too mad that a great filmmaker took it over. But he was like, that one hurt a lot because he said I was like a week away from uh, really getting it done, and it really came down to the Benicio del Toro 
casting that he wanted. And the okay. studio was like, oh, I don't really know about that. And they and I actually could see Benicio del Toro doing the Russell Crowe part, part. Like it would have been good, I think. Um for the most part. But yeah, it was a really interesting discussion between them uh about their approach to the craft. Uh they are very they're both very afraid of AI. Um, oh, and, and it's and it's um, effect on the industry, like coming. Yeah, in the yeah. Future here. They talked, okay. A, yeah. They well. talked. They talked a lot. Of, I talked a lot about that. Um, they also uh, discussed uh, some of the actors they worked with. Uh, it was funny. They wouldn't name anyone who they thought was difficult. They because the, <laughs> the guy they asked they asked them who's been the best person you worked with and who's been the most difficult. And they are very quick to give the best. Um, Antoine. I, I, Brought up uh, Denzel Washington right away, right? Um, and Roland Emmerich uh, named a few people. He named Will Smith, and they both had worked with Will Smith. I guess they have that in common because uh, Antoine Fuqua did Emancipation with Will Smith. Oh, right, yes. Yeah, and, and, uh, and then of course Roland did Independence Day with him, and they said he was great to work with. Um, Roland was closest naming who was difficult, and I kind of think. Okay, any um, theories? Uh, I well, it kind of in another part of the questioning, it was like who were you most nervous to work with? And he said at the time it was Bill Gibson when he did the Patriot. And I forgot oh. he directed the Patriot. Um, and he Roland said, the reason he was nervous. The Patriot? Yeah. Yeah. He directed oh, wow. Yeah, I, awesome. And he said movie. like, what made it, what made him nervous about it was the fact that like Bill Gibson is also a director. And so <laughs> he was like, Oh, and, and it came down to a conversation he had about, the studio didn't want Heath Ledger. They wanted someone else, and he wanted Heath Ledger really bad. So he called Mel Gibson and was like, "Hey, like, I really like this Heath Ledger guy, but they want someone else. Like, what should I do?" And he said that Mel Gibson was like, "It's your movie," and hung up on him. <laughs> <laughs> that is such that a was... Mel Gibson thing to do. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, like he and then he's like, "What?" Well, it was interesting because he brought it back when he finally cast Heath Ledger, and then him and Mel Gibson did scenes together. Mel Gibson did call back to that conversation. He said, see, you're a right to keep him. So, like, trust your instincts, kind of. But then he, in another breath, said, like, you know, we were doing this scene where there's, like, a lot of blood. I need him to get, like, more aggressive and get angry. And then, without any hint of irony, he just goes, I think, like, Mel Gibson is a very a very angry soul. <laughs> like, he has, like, oh, and then everyone in the room just starts laughing because everyone knows about his yeah. kind of sorted history, right? Huh. And even Antoine Fuqua starts dying, but Antoine, like, even though he's laughing, he's like, he's like, Mel Gibson is actually a friend of mine. And I love him. I know, you know, everyone yeah. knows about that, but like, you know, I think that's where he gets his passion from for his acting or whatever. You know, yeah, totally. But I thought that was, I thought he said that with a total lack of irony, like, you know, he's just an angry dude. Um, and but there was one other thing that they brought up that I thought was interesting. Uh, during the uh, panel too. Um, oh yeah, there was like Antoine Fuqua was talking about movies that changed a lot in like the edit and uh, editing. He said Training Day was one that oh, he okay. couldn't. Uh, it was so weird. He said that he couldn't tell that at first if it was working, and I was like, that's so crazy because it seems like a movie that's like great from like start to finish. <laughs> and it but, is, like, <laughs> but like, but like you know, uh, that long ago again. Uh, but he said like you know they both admitted that they hate test screenings. And um, and they said uh, they gave which ones of their movies tested the highest uh, for Antoine Fuqua. It was the first Equalizer movie tested the highest at the test screening. He said his lowest was Training Day. And he's like, and not because the movie was bad. He said like that everyone in the audience was just pissed that he killed Denzel Washington at the end of it. <laughs> uh, and that was the, that was most of the cards that he got back. That they didn't want it's to so deny. it's such a satisfying <laughs> moment in that movie. Yeah. Like, why yeah. were they mad? Yeah. And then. Um, uh, Roland Emmerich said it's one of his highest was Independence Day, and his lowest was 10,000 BC. And I kind of forgot that he did that. Oh, I didn't even too. know that was him. Wow, I remember the marketing for that when I was young and how cool it looked. And he said that was another movie that got like hijacked by the studio, not the movie that he really wanted to make. Seems um, like it, yeah. I can see that. But, happening. They, but a mismatch pair that ended up being like a really good conversation of filmmakers. Uh, because I was gonna leave for that for a second, go to the bathroom because I was like, I don't really know when. The, I, I this, but... didn't know they <laughs> even would do something like that at Comic Con, so it's pretty cool. Usually, you just see that on like Variety. Yeah, yeah. And then after them, it was the Alien Romulus panel. At, yes, uh, tell me about that because I could not be more pumped for this movie. And did they show so footage? They, show, they showed three scenes. They showed um, which oh, one of them? Boy. One of them. One of them's in the trailer. So there's. It's pretty much like basically like uh, they're in this room. It's kind of like command center room thing, and you can see in these little pods that like the face huggers are like 
breathing and about to like get out right and and they don't know what what's going on and they're like you know fiddling around with, with but uh with buttons and of course they have like an artificial person with them uh that's what they yeah. wanted the black guy was like i'm an artificial person that's what we're not gonna an call android it. that's what I, they're yeah, going by I, yeah, yeah i think they were jo- i think they were joking oh, okay. but like but like he kept saying i'm an artificial person and uh the face huggers like get out well one gets out initially attacks one and like the scene is like pretty fucking scary like it attacks one of the guys and it's trying to wrap around his face and it's trying to like insert like it's right you know stuff into its mouth and it keeps missing and like they keep throwing it down and then when he throws one against another one of the pods it breaks one out and then they all eventually escape right like all and there's like a sea of them and then they end up in this uh other little room where like it's like water's rising so they're like swimming around in the water like basically like whipping these guys down like with their fucking tails and like pulling them underneath the water oh boy. And, uh, and the scene's like pretty intense and they're still trying to jump on them and like kylie spaney's character is like trying to get them back to the other room and it's a really tense scene there and then at one point it jumps on the guy's face and it's on the side of his face it's trying to turn its face his face around to, like basically look straight into it right and then the other guy basically like takes like a little zap thing and like zaps it and it like jumps off and then the door opens and they finally all get out of the room with the water and they get the door closed they think completely it, it crushes one of them and then the face suckers are able to get the door completely open and okay, they all I come see this moment in the trailer, <laughs> in the trailer too. Too. yeah and they all come running at uh at, at all of our actors and they ended that scene with it jumping directly on this asian girl's face like it like attaches to her face and then they just cut the black and i'm sure that's how it comes to black but that's where mm. they cut the scene in the right. black oh, um yeah. and yeah, everyone got a <laughs> yeah everyone got a big kick out of that scene uh and then they brought everyone out uh Fetty alvarez was there ali spaney was there um isabella Merced i was there <laughs> um funny thing about her during questioning from the audience a guy was like you were in madam web and <laughs> uh and you're also in this so like uh, what was the difference between making Madame Web and making Alien Romulus? <laughs> and this and this girl behind me was like imitating her. She was like, "I wasn't that. No, I wasn't." <laughs> like she liked to be ashamed of it. And to her credit, she gave the most professional, like sincere answer. She wasn't disrespectful to Madame Web. She was very okay. much like explaining why the two movies were different and and kind of carried on. But the audience was like snickering because like you know this kid didn't. I don't know if he knew it was like probably inappropriate to ask her about a movie <laughs> yeah. a movie that got like ripped apart by critics. Um, Fetty Alvarez said that uh, basically their intentions was to make something that was more in line with Alien and Aliens, um, which is what we've been hearing. Yep. Practical um, effects. Yeah, yeah, all practical, all practical wherever they could. And right. um, and they said the actors said that was the best thing about it because they were they were always acting against something. And like right. they weren't, you know, they weren't acting against like a tennis ball or anything like anything like that. Like they were seeing the real creations. And they said, I forget the guy's name, but the guy who designed the Queen in Aliens actually helped oh. design. He helped design their xenomorphs in Alien Romulus. So um, they had someone that was connected to, you know, one of the movies that they're really wanting to uh, do justice to. And I thought that was really great. Yeah, I think there was well. a crew of them that uh, worked on Aliens, like yeah. a lot of the uh, special effects department. Yeah, so that was really back, cool. Which is great. And then they talked about um they, they sent in questions from like fans and fans ended up being like famous people. So really Scott uh was one of them. He asked them to rank uh the alien movies, uh, and they all felt like they couldn't do it um <laughs> at all. Um, uh, but Fede Alvarez was like, Okay, I'll do this. I'll say I'll say the best and then the least not <laughs> not as good. And he said the best, he said, I think we all can agree is alien. Now there were some people that were like Oh, uh, aliens like Charlie. I think from, you like, can toss him, yeah, toss him <laughs> yeah. up there. And then, and then he said the least, and he included like the the AVP movies. He said AVP Requiem is like the least good. He wouldn't say bad. He said least good. <laughs> okay, even um, over Alien Resurrection. That's now. He, well, it's funny. He said that all the ones in the middle. He said there's something to enjoy about all of them. Like you know, they're like there's something that you can take away from even Alien Three, Alien Resurrection. Um he yeah he was like you know there is like i think there's like a hot he's like a hodgepodge of like where you can find something that works for the audience in each one of those but he said he couldn't really think about that for avp requiem and then the other question uh that was asked was who would win between like a pre- the predator and predator and the xenomorph oh and, and then uh Freddy alvarez was like well you have to be more specific is it like the predator from the first movie and like the alien from like what movie and he's like we can't just say like a general sense like which one would win like you know they're all different in 
different movies. True. And then and then he was like, of course, like the cast here, they're gonna say Xenomorphs, they're promoting Alien Rama, so that's what they're gonna <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and they all and they were all like, No, 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 exactly what we would like choose anyway. They said Kylie Spaney is a trooper, I guess like a full on like uh her character is supposed to be kind of designed after Sigourney Reaver's character, like the Ripley of the bunch. Um, right, definitely feels Ripley and, inspired. And said Freddie Alvarez said that she like he would think that they would have certain scenes like they're like, ever good, and that she would be like, no, fuck it, let's do it again. <laughs> like I don't, I think we can do it better. I think we can do it better. And he was like, you wouldn't think that because she's so little and like you know. But she was the one that was like, let's keep going, let's make it better. I guess she's a big Alien fan too. Oh, well, good. Like, that's awesome. Not, That's like, what you want. not just like, yeah, not just lip service. Like she, he said that she knew the franchise from top to bottom, which is why when it, like, the project came to her, her agent was like, "Hey, do you want to do this?" And she wanted to ask him what his intentions were <laughs> with the movie because she's such a huge fan and one that would hope that he was going to do it justice. And I guess based on the conversations that they had before she started, she trusted him, and uh, the rest of the cast trusted him. They all seemed that they have like a good camaraderie with each other. Which was like pretty cool to see, and um, again, the practical stuff was really cool. There was another scene they showed. Um, we do get a chest burst scene. They did show that. Oh wow! Uh, I was kind of surprised they showed it, um, but like Freddie Alvarez did say, "Hey, even though we're showing you some footage here, it might be tweaked and a little different in the final cut that you're going to see on the 16th." Okay. So, so I thought that was pretty cool that he said that, just in case he's like, "Don't think we're just spoiling everything for you here." Um, the chestburst scene was pretty intense though, and it what it looked all practical, like uh a little bit gorier than the okay. one in the first movie. Um right and, and pretty intense. And then uh they showed us another scene that follows right after that because like their ship crashes and then um everyone can get, kind of get separated, and then of course the little alien thing escapes, <laughs> and then Isabel Merced's character is walking around trying to find uh, one of her friends, and she can see that it's already like shed its skin. Oh, and when boy. she look, and when she looks up, it's this giant, like, like mm, basically full grown like, xenomorph. But it's like not, it's not hatched yet. So like, oh. it, it's like breathing, and then like you basically see the thing get like born, like full grown, like it, like the guy is like one of the guys. She finds one of her, uh, other guys in the crew. And he puts that zap thing in the middle of it, and he thinks he's like killing it because it's making noise and then when he takes his thing out it's completely melted all the way down to the bottom oh and then, boy. And, then and then it starts to like uh come out of its thing <laughs> and you're actually watching it watching the thing be born basically yeah, that's pretty cool uh, yeah so like and it all practical it looks really cool i mean classic xenomorph design to you so it looks good I'm super hyped for this movie i really want my i'm really hoping that my theater uh has the have you seen the uh, the novelty popcorn bucket for this movie? Oh, the, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Really poor design for a popcorn bucket, like efficiently for eating out of, yeah. but it looks so cool. I really want one, so I'm hoping I get my hands on one. <laughs> yeah, and they actually had a moment during the panel that actually worked because this could have been really cheesy, but it's in the middle of questions, and then all of a sudden the stage goes dark, and then the screen comes on, and then it's showing on the screen that like, all these face huggers are escaping in the middle of Hall H. So they're escaping in the middle of the hall and they're running around like down the side of the stages, like oh, cool. all, all this stuff and like on stage with the actors. So the actors were looking down. I mean, I, I would, would think they were in on it, but some of them look genuinely surprised unless they're just <laughs> acting. Um, and then it showed one guy backstage get like jumped by one and then they have him run out on stage. He like starts coughing up like he's foaming from the mouth and they have like a thing burst out of his chest. That actually oh, worked really well. That's uh, pretty cool. <laughs> Could have been easily cheesy, and then that's when they gave us all our own uh, face huggers uh, to take home with us. Yeah, were they uh, like inflatable, or what was the deal? Were they stuffed? Yeah, so, so they're they're like it's they're they, I don't know how to really describe it. They like it's they are stuffed, but they're they're very movable. You can like wrap it around your neck and oh, to your cool. face. Um, and uh, they made they had us all take a picture with it on they because like they took like a big group selfie with everyone in the hall. Sweet. Um, and then we all got a ticket for Alien Romulus in IMAX too. That's what. Well. Oh my um, god, that is awesome! Which was pretty cool. Um, I think you're gonna like it. The footage we saw was really good. I mean, oh, it I, looks like it's got the hallmarks of everything that I want in an Alien movie, and I'm just so excited. It's been geez seven years since our last Alien outing in Covenant, and I love Covenant. I've seen it so many times since. But anyway, this is something I've been really looking forward to, and I wanted to hear about your chat about it, having seen and been at that panel and yeah. sacrificing. 
your chance to see Buffy, uh, Buffy in I the know. flesh. So yep. we yep. appreciate your efforts in going to for the greater, for the the greater good. For yeah. the greater good. Um, there was stuff on Saturday. I won't bore you guys with the Superman and Lois and all that stuff because we don't really talk about TV um, on the show. The, the, the pink one did have a panel. Colin Farrell wasn't there. He kind of zoomed in because he's busy filming something else. But, I mean, his insight on that show and that character was really cool to listen to as well. I mean, they were they, I, they were cooking up this show while making the Batman. I mean, that was like a cool thing to learn. Oh, that's that, neat. That Matt Reeves was like, hey, like you're only in, I think he said four or five seasons of the Batman. I always forget how many scenes he's actually in. I know he's not in a lot. And, they, and then Matt Reeves was like, and I cut one of them too. And I, I oh, feel really boy. bad about that. <laughs> um, but they said that entire time, like the guy who designed the look, his name is like Mike Moreno and Colin Farrell and Matt Reeves are all like, hey, like, is there more to this character? And then they brought in a showrunner that was like, I want to dig deeper into who this guy is. And I think I can do that across eight episodes. And I think we have something really good. And uh, the trailer they showed for that looked really good. I think they released that online, um, the trailer they showed at Comic-Con. But um, it was really good. And it looks promising. And the, oh, he also uh, revealed that they're going to start filming the Batman at the top of the year. So, a oh, Batman part two. Bat, sorry. Bat, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, nice. At, at the top of the year. About um, time. Yeah. So he's very excited for that as well. Um, so I guess the big, big thing about San Diego Comic Con Hall each Saturday is the yes. Marvel. Yes. Yes. Um, and that kind of particular. <laughs> that kind of breaks us into our news part of the show. Um, and I will, I'll do the, like, they showed us stuff from Captain America, Brave New World. The trailer looks really cool. They, Anthony Mackie was there. Uh, Harrison Ford was there. Um, it looked like he was having a lot of fun. Uh, okay. he, was he was revealed to uh, turn into Red Hulk in the trailer that they showed. Yeah. So, what are your <laughs> thoughts on that? I know that, uh, you know, Thaddeus Ross is Red Hulk and yeah. many variations in the comics and stuff. And I thought that eventually we'd see that in the MCU, but I thought it would have been a great movie reveal rather than trailer tease yeah i would thought it was interesting too because like of course that trailer that's not it's not online yet right so it's basically everyone in the room is seeing it but they're encouraging you to tell your friends if you're on a show like this or whatever right and if you're writing about it you can describe what you saw i thought it was interesting that they revealed that there but i think they wanted something really cool to show for that movie in the room and that was a really big thing to show they also kind of revealed that they're talking about animantium and captain america Brave New World, which gives us gets us a little closer to the whole like right mutant X like X Men stuff. Yep. Um, and uh, Harrison Ford uh, in an interview, I thought it was it's very on brand for Harrison Ford. They asked him what was it like to did he feel silly doing the motion capture work? He was like, no, you just do it. They paid me money. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, whatever like he's very he's stressing that he did this movie for the money, but it looks like he's having fun on stage. Like he oh. came out, he kind of imitated like turning into the Hulk on stage. So like it looks like he's having fun. Probably like something he thing. didn't think was going to happen in his career. <laughs> yeah, like, like uh, you know, but I'm, I'm glad he can be honest. Like, yo, it, I, it's a paycheck movie, but you know, you yep. can still enjoy doing a paycheck movie. I guess. Totally. He's, I mean, I guess Anthony Mackie was the one that they did the movie together. I forget which one. He said in 2004, but he, they had Anthony Mackie had two scenes with him. And I guess Harrison he, Ford. With Harrison Ford, and I guess huh. he called him up and was like, "Hey, would you want to do this?" And Harrison Ford was like, "Let me get back to you." And then he called him in two days. Was like, "Yeah, I'm down. Let's see what like." Get me a script, and then he was down to do it. Okay, so, neat. I know. I don't know why I'm imagining Harrison Ford being like an old begrudging all the time, but I guess he can be fun. <laughs> I know, like, he is, he not, is hard solo. <laughs> yeah, although not not fun is not the word I associate with Harrison Ford in the last like decade or so. He seems like a grumpy old man. I don't even know why he still makes movies, and he never seems to have a good time doing it. But I know he that's just nice always, that he's, he's like, enjoying himself. Just, he always seems disgruntled. I don't know. Yeah, and this is coming from a huge Harrison Ford fan. So, uh, and then uh, I always is, is it Giancarlo Esposito? He was on uh, Breaking Bad yep. and, or in Better Call Saul. Um, he revealed that he's playing Sidewinder in uh, Brave New World, which is like he's the king of the Serpent, Red Serpent Society. I don't know anything about that, so uh, okay. comic book people will have to fill well, me I've in. I've seen him in the trailer, <laughs> and I thought it was interesting. Like, I love Giancarlo Esposito. I thought an action y role like that, he seemed a little old to be cast in something like that, but he seemed pretty convincing and like in the footage from the trailer yeah. that I saw, I just felt like that would have been more on brand for him 10 years ago. But then again, um, yeah, he was just wrapping up his involvement and in, I guess he'd been a little bit out of um, breaking bad at that point, but he is a wonderful villain, probably one of the better TV villains of all time in a show that you've got to see. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, no, I prom I, I, I promise you <laughs> yeah. by the end of the year, we're I, in the I second half of the year now. So uh, <laughs> I the window is narrowing. Really 
Go I know ahead. you're like, you know how the time flies, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, it really does. Uh, and that's kind of all they really showed with them. And then they brought out the cast of Thunderbolts. So that's Sebastian Stan, uh, Hannah John came in, Wyatt Russell, Julie Dreyfus, Florence Pugh, David Harbour, uh, uh, Louis uh, Pol uh, Pullman uh, was there as well. Um, the They showed the trailer for that. It looks really good. I mean, it looks okay, like... Finally, some you can tell, from that. You can tell it's like, you know, it looks like a better Suicide Squad. And like not, I'm not talking like the Suicide Squad, but better than like the first one that we got from. Okay. DC. You could tell it's supposed to be like about Marvel's kind of like misfit heroes a bit. Okay. Um, led by Florence Pugh's character that uh, was introduced in Black Widow, and uh, they all praised her on stage. Everyone had very nice things to say about Florence Pugh, um, so that was really cool. She's been David Harbour actually. She's been very busy, and I actually like she. You know, she mentioned something on stage where like you know. I think it was like two years ago when they announced Thunderbolts and she was like, you know, we felt that energy then from the crowd and like, you know, we love, I love feeling this energy again here. And she's made it, she's made it known that like she wants to make prestige indie movies and also is allowed to make like big blockbuster yeah. movies too. And she says they, cha they both challenge her the same way. She's like, she doesn't think she's above doing movies like this. So I thought that was really cool that she, she's found like a common ground with like doing mainstream stuff and also doing, smaller things that you know that other people might think are more like she said she got a lot of shit from indie people who were like yeah i remember in, this when she when she joined the mcu and she was like no and, unless you're on set making these movies like that she's like the process of making them is just as intricate and interesting as making some of those smaller projects that she's also known for no doubt they have their own set of challenges and i appreciate that she's willing to toe the line and do both not toe the line right. but like I branch out and do both types of movies i remember being a detractor to the news of her joining the mcu because i thought and you know the conversation around mcu actors is that they're hauled into this role i mean the ones that are going to be playing major roles they, that usually they get tied down, down uh, for a significant amount of their career right and so at the time no one really knew what her schedule going forward would look like but Happy to see that she is still, and there's still several movies um, that she's uh, still in the making of, and have had trailers yeah. coming. Like the We Live in Time with uh, Andrew Garfield, just trailer just dropped. Obviously, she was yeah. filming that while also balancing Thunderbolts. She was just in Oppenheimer last year. Uh, Dune Part Two. Dune Part Two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and presumably the third part. I'm imagining yeah. that's coming out. So really busy. Glad that she's not just signing that contract and not doing anything else. So I kind of rescind that um criticism i suppose but i remember being worried that we would not see her do these indie roles anymore that she's you know done really well in so yeah but good for her yeah and uh she uh david harbour actually dressed up as red guardian during the panel uh it was, oh, a, cool. it was it, he was in full character um th and i thought that was pretty funny um i don't know they look at their fun group right wyatt russell said it was the most fun he's ever had doing a movie so there was that and more fun um, than night swim <laughs> oh right, god right. Oh, and no. julia and julia reed drive is, is like you can tell that she's having fun at this stage of her career being involved in something like this i mean like she doesn't need to do mo a movie like this i mean she's already solidified in like you know television history from seinfeld right she she was able to have another uh sitcom after that the old adventures of new christine that ran for her a little bit and then she was on veep so like she, veep, so, right? so, yeah. yeah so she has like a career you know, and she's done been lucky enough to do some movies too. But like, she seems very pumped that she's been involved in these MCU movies, and she's like, and finally with this project, they'll they'll get to fully know more about her character and what she's all yeah. about. Yeah, because she's kind of only been, popped up a few times. Like, yeah, she's small, been in it for small, a so. while, but not yeah. a lot of details as to her character. So that's interesting. Yeah, um, they didn't really give out much information, but it was just the trailer. The trailer looks pretty good. The action looks pretty great in what we were shown as well. Uh, you can see every one of them kind of like showcase their abilities in the trailer, which is kind of fun. Okay. Um, and then um, I guess the big news from the night. Oh uh, well, we already we already knew the Rooster Brothers were in talks to do the next Avengers movies, and then that was made right. official at Comic Con. I actually wanted to ask you what you thought about that news first, because I when right. I heard it when I heard it, I was like, you know what? They made 
Winter Soldier, Civil War, Infinity War, Endgame. Those are arguably not only some of the best MCU movies, but one could it's argue not the best, the best, four. best comic book, or <laughs> yeah. even some of the best comic book movies made. Yeah, you know they they're really well done. Now yeah. I can't I can't say much about their output outside of the MCU because it's been mixed. Um, but right. they seem to know these characters, know these this world. So if they had to go back to the drawing board because of whatever, I mean, it seems like Jonathan Majors is what fucked this up. Because <laughs> uh, like they, I mean, I don't. I, he didn't if, make if, things any easier to deal with. I'll put give them that. I don't think he I was mean, the sole reason, but definitely a big part. Yeah. I'm just wondering. I just wonder if like if he if that hadn't happened, would they had still dumped the Kang stuff, or if he would have been their main villain? And because that was going to be the Kang Dynasty, that was right. going to be the first. And then Secret Wars is always going to be the second Avengers movie. Right. Um, but I don't know. Maybe I should put that all in one man. But it seems like. Uh, that is That's a case. tall order for sure. I bet if he had maintained, oh yeah, no, I totally believe that if he had not, you know, if what had happened to his career had not happened, that they would still be going headstrong with that storyline. Absolutely. I, I don't think there's any evidence to suggest they wouldn't. And we can't, you oh. know, it's only speculative to guess anyway. But to answer your question, I think it's a good move for Marvel casting the Russo brothers. They have a immaculate track record working with that studio and producing like you said four of the best comic book movies ever definitely in the last yeah. 10 years and in the mcu uh itself the top i think those are the cream of the crop of as far as those movies are concerned yeah. it's i'm you know it's going to cost marvel disney marvel quite a bit getting those directors back because you know they command yeah, I, don't they, I, don't, I don't think they i don't think they were cheap and so you know they're going to be involved in two of the biggest movies again exactly you know? so i yeah. don't i don't see any issue with their casting i think it i think it is telling though that they recognize that they're in hot water as a studio and are unclear as to what they're going to do going forward and yeah. i don't think but on the other hand i because i remember at the point after endgame they themselves had issued that they were kind of stepping away and going to do some of their own projects not many of which I think they mostly executive produce like big budget so action I, films, right? I personally like Cherry. That was the one with Tom Holland. Um, Did they direct people, that? I, yeah, a lot of people didn't like it. Yeah, I heard. Um, no, I never saw it, but I didn't hear. I, it. Didn't blow I enjoyed away. it. Um, okay. you know, and I think they, they think they did the Gray Man with uh, yeah, which I actually thought was fun for a Netflix I, action. I thought movie. It was, I thought it was fun too. Yeah. Some people didn't like it. I mean, yeah, I think they're I think their MCU MCU outputs better, but like yeah, I agree. No. Um, but I don't, I think it's smart on both of their ends to come back. They, there's nothing to suggest that it won't be successful with them at the helm of a Marvel, especially like Avengers level movies. So yeah, all in all makes sense, but it does, it does to me signal that, um, Marvel is kind of going back to what's familiar and what works for them when they weren't able to do this without them sort of thing. Yeah. And, you know, I, just speaking as, as them as directors, I think it was smart to Go back to. I mean, they yeah, made the best. They made directors. the best move. They made the best movies for them, and they understand the world. And and they, you know, they did say on the panel that we thought we were done after Endgame. And then I think, I think sometimes when you go off and do other stuff, you have time away from it. And yeah, you get. Pre I mean, you get presented. I mean, I, I don't know what the pitch they were presented with. Maybe they were like, "Help save us," because we're in like dire straits right now, trying to figure <laughs> out a new story. For whatever. Give us a number. We'll it. write it. We'll write yeah. the check. Let us um, know how much. Yeah. So they're officially back, and the first thing they, they announced is they well, it's they were like they know they were going to do a, a Avengers Secret Wars. That was already out there. That is a big. It's a. I mean, I read the story in comic books when I was a kid. It's a big, yeah. big story that is pretty sprawling. And if you want to do it justice, it can't be done in one movie. So I feel like it's going to be hinted at in this other movie that's before uh, <laughs> Secret Wars. Um, and it, if they do it right, it'll be really good. Um, Yep. It reminds me of like if if X Men had done like Dark Phoenix right if they had done that across two movies that could have right. been a pretty epic story because that's a really good comic book story too. Um, but a lot of comic book fans know that Secret Wars involves a certain villain, and um, before Secret Wars in 2026, because that's coming out in 2027, we are getting Avengers Doomsday, which is, a, is officially re replacing Avengers the Kings or Kings Dynasty. Yep. So I'm I'm assuming they're just dropping that. I don't know they're dropping it with no explanation. They didn't explain that at all. But um, and so when everyone saw the Doomsday logo, they were like, "Oh, oh we're getting Doctor Doom." And then right. of course, they were like, "This whole spiel about getting the right actor to play." victor von doom and then they had a bunch of victor von dooms on stage with mask on and then one stepped up 
in particular and pulled his mask off and it was uh Robert Downey Jr. which got a which got a big uh applause in the room. Yes. But uh Huge. I, there was murmurs when we left and then online that was like very mixed. And I think that um one it's obvious that it's a variant of Tony Stark. So it's not I mean they do this in the comic books a lot. Yeah, and, I don't know how uh, they could do it and it not be a variant. It would literally make no sense for them to be a completely right. new character. Right. Um, and despite people knowing this and that it's a comic book thing, it happens. There were some discourse online that they were like, well, I mean, there should have been another actor chosen to be Dr. Doom. And I kind of think that that could still be the case. Like they can still do Dr. Doom with another actor. And like, you know, yeah, maybe this is just a setup for that. Who knows? We don't even know yet because everyone's all I guess, on things that we don't. Yeah, we think that, we know everything we right now, and we really don't. Yeah. Um. I. Uh, yeah, but oh, I know one of the major discourses was, and this actually was interesting coming out of a weekend where Deadpool and Wolverine just obliterated all records this weekend. Um. They were like it ended perfectly for Robert Downey Jr. in the MCU as Iron Man. It was yep. a he had a he had a perfectly good arc from like starting out as this like cocky, selfish, self entitled human being to someone that sacrificed himself for the greater good to save the world, and yeah. that was a perfect that was a perfect ending for him. Now he's not playing Tony Stark, so that shouldn't matter. I mean, that should matter, right? He's not playing that guy, but a lot of people are like, but he's so recognizable in that role that it takes away from that pivotal moment. In in game where he sacrifices himself, even if it is going to be taking on the playing on playing someone right. else, that is it will dope. in some parts undo that perfect arc that he had and illegitimize his sacrifice and death. Because you're not going to look at Tony Stark could be playing Wonder Woman, and you would look at him and be like, "That's your sorry, Robert Downey Jr. could be playing that," and then you would look at him and be like, "That is Iron Man." There's no no comic book role could he play, and you're not going to associate him as that. So. Especially yeah. to bring him into the same cinematic universe as a different character, I I can commend whoever's decision that was as like that is bold. That is the last name I ever would have thought as being cast back in the MCU, unless he was coming back as Iron Man. Can't get can't take that away from them. I, I think that was very bold. It's gonna help put asses in theater seats by yeah. the time that movie comes out. So like, good call on that front. In in getting people to come see that movie. They're going to want to see how is this all handled? Is he going to play an Iron Man variant? Is he a brand new Victor Von Doom? Like there's going to be these questions that people aren't going to be able to help themselves, me included. Like I haven't seen an MCU movie in theater since I think Shang-Chi and I'm interested in going to see how they handle this, especially with the yeah. Russo brothers back. Like that's enough to get me back there. But yeah. No, yes, there we go. thematically, <laughs> big, like from a storyline <laughs> perspective, and like the ramifications of the MCU going forward, I definitely think that they are sacrificing what they had at the end of the Endgame storyline uh, for nostalgia, for, for nostalgia's <laughs> sake, and to to try and get as much as many people in to see Avengers Doomsday as possible. And I don't think that this uh, you can. I feel like this feels like a pivot because of the Kang Dynasty not uh, going forward. And uh, speaking about Marvel's purse, uh, I'm sure it's a lot, lot lighter than after getting him back on board, yeah, especially what so he my, did for the my MCU. Train, my train of thought was they backed up the Brinks truck to his house <laughs> and, yeah. dumped, and, and dumped everything out of the Brinks truck. But then also, because like some people, I saw this a lot online, and I kind of don't like this. They were like, man, he did what he needed to do in the MCU. Like Then he left. He started doing respectable movies. He has an Oscar now. Why is he going back to this? But Robert Downey Jr. has always said, even while he's promoting Oppenheimer, that he feels some of the best work he's done has been in the MCU as an actor. And he said that like it doesn't get the credit it deserves because they're comic book movies. Right. But he said, but he felt some of the best work he's done has been in those movies. So I don't think he looks down on them. I don't think he like no. is like. Uh, I think he likes doing them. Now I'm sure they they did write him a big check. I would no imagine. <clears throat> but I also, but I also think someone else wrote something I thought was really interesting. He's a he seems like a really cool guy, but he, he has a big ego. And I they were like, I don't think he would sign up for something that wasn't worth his time or his effort. True. That because like I think they I think they presented him with a story that was like, okay, this will work. And he's appearing in both of these movies. He's gonna be in Doomsday and Sea Rewards, but uh I think that they presented him with an idea 
that he thought was good and I, he went with it i think and, he likes the idea of being the guy back in the spotlight in the MCU <laughs> again right like yeah. you're going to be the guy that we are running with uh as especially in a completely different role now as a villain on the other side of the the table here so i'm sure that his ego is looking forward to trying and a new challenge too right like he was known for playing like the hero of the MCU for a decade. Yeah. And now he gets a chance to try out the other side. And that would be uh, an attractive challenge to an actor, especially one hot off an Oscar looking to continue to challenge themselves. Yeah. I, I don't, I want another thing though. A, a big part of this conversation is he had, so many, so much time, so many movies, such a great arc built that led him to his end in Endgame. He had 10 years of movies of storyline to yeah. flesh out. This saga of the cinematic universe that we find ourselves in now doesn't have a fraction of that buildup of that cohesion. That, yeah, that of kind that of like storyline. We the, the stakes. The do you stakes really know like what a, the story is it, of the MCU it, right now? Not like, right what now. Are we building no. towards? It doesn't. So, it doesn't really have the emotional stakes that no. That movie had. And I think yeah. that is going to come. And I'm like, I think and they're going like, to see that. And I'm like, can we change that with Captain America, Thunderbolts, and Fantastic Four? I forgot to mention that they were also there. That was the third movie that they right. talked about. We got to meet Marvel's first family. They all seemed fun too. Uh, as well, they show. Oh, and like they didn't show. They haven't started filming. They actually were going to go fly to London and start filming uh, today. Uh, actually, on Which, Fantastic Four. Oh, okay. Uh, Fantastic yeah. Four. But but they did show test footage of what the movie. They shot stuff with them specifically to show to the Comic Con crowd. And the theme of Fantastic Four is going to be a retro '60s theme movie. Which I think and really I think, cool. Which I think will be really cool. They are also going to be in the next two Avengers movies as well. They did announce that. Um, so they're going to be a part oh. of that whole okay. thing too how I, old are they so, gonna be <laughs> i mean I, I'm, I'm sure there's gonna be a whole how thing is that time. gonna work yeah i'm sure there's gonna be a whole thing with time and multiverse shit oh but, you know, and, 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 brought and, that up. and a lot of people are complaining about like how yeah. the multi, multiverse and variance makes things too hard uh, to understand for the casual moviegoer um and they hate the argument well they do in the comic books and some people are like well whatever works in the page doesn't always work on the screen um, valid <laughs> Uh, and I know it can get confusing for most, but I I'm glad you hit that nail on the head. There are less emotional stakes so far through these. So last far, I mean, have we been yep. in like two phases or one phase? I can't remember anymore what phase we're in right now. Because uh, uh, I haven't, but looked in too long. But we haven't we haven't earned that emotional heft just yet. But maybe we will across these next three movies. Who knows? Perhaps uh, that they're that we're, they're releasing next year. I, so. I'm glad you brought up the just one thing. I also wanted to kind of touch on again is is um the multiverse and variant sort of thing like i don't think and i'm from the discourse that i seem to find online anyway when i do come across and talk about marvel in particular is that it, this does not seem to be resonating with audiences like like maybe we all thought it might it's been like four or five years of this and it's not really catching on i know a lot yeah. of it has been displayed in marvel's shows um, yeah, yeah. which a lot of the movie of audiences that aren't too diehard into MCU, like don't make the time to watch. And so that I think is going to be another hurdle in how they're going to explain and justify, you know, uh, yeah. RDJ's appearance as a different character. And if you're going to have to do more homework and watch shows leading up to secret wars, I think that would be wise at this point. If they do want to start constructing a story, yeah. they've, especially building up to a huge multi-movie event, like in the next Avengers movies. Like I think a few movies before that as set up would be a good idea. And I feel like there's not much to build on from the previous few years of MCU movies with all the changes that have just happened. So yeah. uh, it's, you know what, it's going to be an uphill battle. That's for sure. Now, but the, um, cool, the cool thing yeah. about secret wars though, is the potential of who could be involved in it. Cause like, and the comic book crossed over with the Amazing Spider-Man, the Avengers, Captain America, the Incredible Hulk, Iron Man. Uh, Thing had his own uh, comic book series back then. The Fantastic Four, uh, Marvel's Jeez. team ups, the Uncanny X-Men, and Thor. It crossed over across all those titles. So you have the potential for all those characters to show up. Um, and so I, I suspect that's going to be a very expensive movie in itself. The Secret Wars will be. Um, yeah. And then someone brought up a good point about the Robert Downey Jr. thing being the face of the person that they once you know loved and admired and how that might be hard for them to uh 
fight and kill someone that has the face of someone that they once loved and admired. Like, what would that do to someone like to Peter Parker's uh, Spider-Man? Yeah, seeing someone seeing someone that was his hero, someone that he looked up to. You Good know, point. With, you know, the villain having the face of like this person that they once like looked up to. So there, there's some good narrative, I guess, things that could happen with this. Um, you look skeptical, but, <laughs> but like, well, I, it's not I that I'm skeptical. I think that is a cool point that I actually I had not heard anybody raise that yet. But what I when you said that, it made me think of a comment I read online that I think would have been a. I don't want to say better because it's all hypothetical. We don't know how it's going to play out yet. But what I thought would have been a more interesting idea is because Victor Von Doom, and I know that he was portrayed without his costume and mask and like the other Fantastic Four movies from the 2000s, but yeah. somebody pitched him do, having an unknown actor uh, do the physical work under the mask and everything and kind of add yeah. to the mystery of the character, kind of like Vader in the original Star oh. Wars trilogy, and have uh, a great voice actor voice the character kind of like james spader for uh ultron ultron yeah and, ha and have cool. the character done that way and then there's a more a, a mystery to the character and you're not associating him with another you know iconic yeah. character for the mcu i thought that would have been a really cool route to introduce victor von doom in and then maybe have a cool uh physical actor reveal down the down the road later into the second movie or something yeah. missed opportunity now but uh who knows i mean I, there's so many unanswered questions yet about what they're even going to do with RDJ in yeah, I mean, Von Doom. This is like the very, very, very early stages and people yeah. are already like, you know, sounding the alarm on like why this it, is bad and why I, this is great. Exactly. Yeah. Like we got to relax a bit and see what really happens. Yeah. I am on the camp though that is skeptical of how they're going to pull it off, but I commend them for the absolute balls to the wall, crazy approach to un unorthodox approach and casting him as victor von and by uh, the way Doom is pretty cool kudos to like doing this marvel at comic-con because they have d23 in two weeks which is like the disney showcase which is i would think they would have saved some of these reveals for that's that, a which, good point which, yeah. which makes me think they have even bigger things to reveal at d23 so uh you know i think they're just trying to rebuild you know a little goodwill with fans I, and yeah you know, yeah that's needed I, um and also no, someone else brought up a good point you know Doctor Doom is someone that is covered with a mask for, you know, traditionally in comic books, but you can't cast Robert Downey Jr. and cover his face, right? So, like, what are yeah. they going to do with that? I mean, I guess there's another thing to oh, consider boy. how how much are they going to show of him? Um, but again, all speculation, and that was like you know the end of the Marvel uh, Hall H stuff. But it was a cool way to end it. The whole room was like, oh, to be in that probably. be in that room when that all that stuff was going on. Like it was. So it was you were pretty, in there when that happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. Oh in there when that wow, happened. man, so that's it, crazy. It was, it was pretty ridiculous. Like yeah, you could feel I mean, that. Regardless, no one's thinking all these things right in the moment when you saw. No, his no, face, it's, it's like, what you. It's what you like think about it later. Like, wait yeah, a like would have been an cool. incredible moment to see, and like will probably go down as you know comic book history because I'm sure these movies will be successful. No matter it's what, some, yeah, yeah. Every everyone complaining about how wrong it is, you're still gonna go see it. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, they're gonna be contributing their money to it. I'm sure they're gonna yeah. be. Well, yeah. All right. Um, I, but I will say, yeah, it was a great time, and I, you know, I will be really cool. And uh, like, once you get to a spot where, like, where you have like a really set schedule with work and all that's kind of squared away, like, if we can do one of these events together, that'd be like really fun. Like, anyone that you can actually feasibly like fly to, like, you know, there's stuff like there's San Diego Comic Con, Toronto Film Festival, what right. Sundance, Sundance, a lot of the stuff that you could easily get to. That'd be a really cool thing to do something like that together. Took the words right out of my mouth because the whole time I was thinking, as soon as I'm able to, I want to go out and see an event like this, like go to a yeah. Comic Con. TIFF has been like probably the number one thing I'll probably do, like from a fil uh, film like a event perspective, because it's like yeah. probably the closest, most significant thing that happens to me on the East yeah. Coast. So that's something that I'd like to do big time too. So maybe in like a year or two, that'd be something that we hammer out and then. Have some footage for the show, some conversations for the show, and then listeners about that. But Comic Con is definitely gonna be something I want to attend as well. But yeah, yeah I'm luckily like I'm just starting up school soon. It won't be too much longer before I'm, like you said, have my schedule all set, and I'll be looking to absolutely do stuff. And that could be a little tradition. Yeah, because like yeah. I once it, once this is over, I was like uh, I was I started. Uh, I, I should guess I should have told you this offline. Like I started making moves on like how to like pitch how do you like pursue black to, back to the blockbuster as like the outlet that gets sent to these things rather than having an outlet send me to these things right okay uh, you know now what do i need to do to like make sure that 
the podcast is invited and uh i met someone that could possibly help us out with that so that's what uh, no I'm way gonna, so that's what yeah. i'm going to do over the next you know few months that's what i want to like kind of look into on how that can be arranged so like that's that was like my train of thought once that's, everything was over and wrapped up so okay that's fantastic you make sure you let me know what i can do to make that yeah. a reality because that would yeah. be so much fun yeah for sure because they take care of everything man so it's like it's yeah. you know it's it's nice oh you know i'd be there <laughs> that's for so, sure it'd be fun yeah um all right, so these next few things we're going to try to blow through in about 30 <laughs> minutes or so. We might cut a couple of them just in case. Uh, yeah, we'll see. But yeah, a lot of trailers uh, came out. Not yeah. even ones from Comic-Con, some, but lots to react to uh, over the last couple of weeks. I think it's been a couple of weeks since we did news. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and even just other news items in general. But I'll let you lead the way with our first one here. All right, we got a second trailer for Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, this is a more of a full trailer than a teaser trailer. And I will say that I was already sold on it when I first watched when we found the teaser trailer. So was I'm I. Even more, I'm even more sold on it now. It's the most Tim Burton movie I think he's done. It looks like the most Tim Burton movie he's done in a very long time. And Agreed. I like I like the mix of like the new with like kind of like having Jenna Ortega's character there and like her being related to like Lydia and that kind of like brings it back to the original movie and it and that connection. And I like that you're getting new characters, but there's also a respect to like the original movie too. It seems right. like they found the right line to like. I mean, I mean, I mean, it is a legacy sequel. Uh, so, yep. but I, one I, that I I'm so on board for, I've been loving the marketing for this movie, like two thumbs up. It's, it's completely got me. I'm, I couldn't be happier. I thought this trailer was awesome. Right. And I also love to, uh, Michael Keaton said something, um, you know, he talked about his screen time in the first movie, which isn't a lot. Um, no. even though it seems like he dominates a lot of the movie, he's, it's not a lot. And he said his stipulation for doing the second one was like, I don't want a ton of screen time just because we're doing a sequel. I want to kind of keep it the way it was the first movie. And Tim Burton honored that. Okay. So he is not like in it a lot compared to like, you know, relatively pretty much how, okay. pre pretty much how he was in the first movie. Um, so I thought that was really cool that they're not just going to make him the forefront. Cause that'd be, that'd be a lot. It would be easier to do that. Yeah. And they're not, I just think it looks cool. It looks, I mean, we haven't had a real Tim Burton movie in a really long time. So <laughs> I don't know I I liked the new trailer a lot. Michael Keaton is also hilarious in every line he gets. He just nails like he feels yeah. like feels like he did. He has not even stepped out of the shoes of this character in the forty odd I, years. I, I, I would say that about him. I would say that about Renona Ryder in that yeah. role too. So like she hasn't really. Uh, I mean, she knows that character through and through as well. Uh, the stuff that we've seen with Catherine O'Hara looks pretty cool. Yeah, too. And then, she was uh, pretty absent from this trailer, wasn't she? Yeah, she was a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I don't but, remember but, seeing her. But like I don't, it looks fun. I don't know I'm 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 optimistic, and I think they're premiering. So it. They're premiering it at the 81st Venice International Film Festival, which bodes well for its potential. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, but any like, did you what did you think about the trailer the overall? Did you, are you I sold? just like I wasn't really anticipating another one because we had the teaser, we had already a full length trailer. Uh, and so to get this other one, I was like, all right, well, let's buckle up and see what other stuff they could give us. It still hasn't revealed like a whole lot about the plot. We know a little bit about like the central premise of Winona Ryder trying to save her daughter from trouble, but there's yeah. still a lot of ambiguity with the plot, which I like. Um, trailer was on a little on the lengthier side, but because it's not really giving us too much, at least not that I picked up, I'm not upset about that. I thought the effects look great. I love that there's a blend yeah. of like the old eighties look for yeah, the characters. Like like stuff but, in there, yeah. And yeah. I like the stop motion stuff they're using in it too. Though. Exactly. Like, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, that is awesome to see, and it's not yeah. just going by the CGI route. Obviously, there must be some in there, but the characters look great. Michael Keaton, I feel like we got a lot of him in this trailer, and he was making me yeah. like legit laugh. Like all I really wanted out of this, and it's made me excited to rewatch the original Beetlejuice because it's been a couple that is of what years. I'm excited for. Too. Yeah, I'm excited I mean, to get uh, that watch in because I haven't watched that in a really long time uh so that'll be fun to yeah. explore again how are you uh, calling are you telling wait, when you're talking about beetlejuice are you saying beetlejuice 2 or beetlejuice beetlejuice have you been mixing it up i don't know what to call uh, i've been movie. mixing it up like amongst friends i've been beetlejuice too because if i say beetlejuice beetlejuice they're like what <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh uh yeah but amongst friends like beetlejuice too because it, it just confuses them but yeah i get nice. the whole play on that but yeah it opens on september 6th looks good first trailer that we talked about we both agree on um do we yep. want to talk about the alien realms trailer the new one that came out or do you think we've covered i think we could probably get through it like we already spent a lot of time talking about yeah. it it doesn't give us too much new stuff we we still like and i after comic-con i just want to see it even more fully so I'm exactly i uh, and they've stressed that everyone should see it in imax so like I'll, oh, I'll say sorry. that too one thing yeah and sadly i won't get that experience but one thing that i 
it was cool. I watched the trailer before today, as soon as it came out, didn't notice this detail, but then watching it to talk about it here. Um, did you catch that little song that's sprinkled throughout? Um, oh, I can't remember what the words are. Um, you are my lucky star. It's like, it's really subtle. Yeah, yeah, the trailer, yeah, 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 I did, but yeah. it's the song that uh, Ripley is singing to Jones saying. in the first alien movie. I was like, Oh, yeah. that's cool that they kind of threw that in there. So I, I picked that up. I was so like, like, yeah, pretty like call, call cool detail. Really cool. Yeah. It yeah. went right over my head the first time I saw the trailer. But anyway, that's all the only thing new that I had to say about that trailer. Yeah, we're hyped for it. It comes out August 16th. Um, Literally, all, all sure. I'm looking forward to in the next two weeks. We're, we're going to we're gonna sound like little fucking nerds. And I better get on the show. that novelty popcorn <laughs> bucket. If anybody gets one and wants to sell it to me, if I don't get one, hit me up. Oh, yeah, and I have a poster <laughs> to send to you, too. That, uh, yes, thank you very yeah. much for thinking uh, of me yeah. while you were yeah. tied up at Comic-Con. I appreciate that. Because they were like, oh, only take one. I was like, I need two. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, awesome. And they, <laughs> they that's like, awesome. Like, yeah, and they were like, all right. Like, Thanks. Much appreciated. Um, I'll get my info to you so I can get that uh, and drape sure. that on my wall. <laughs> um, all right, we got another trailer for uh, – I'm going to call this Joker 2 because I'm, I'm always going to butcher the title, and you uh, – Fair so enough. Joker two you, works. <laughs> you, you, you say it better than I do. Um, uh, this one doesn't really hide that it's a musical, which I'm actually like. Yeah, yeah that, that was good. Someone actually posted like, I can't believe this movie compared to like the trailer for Wicked, which kind of doesn't really show a lot of song and dance. Like, why is right. that movie hiding its musical inspirations? And this this trailer really went full out on that. Right. Um, I'm so I'm sold on what it's selling now at this point. I'm, yeah. I, I, I think it looks interesting. Um, and uh, for what I learned, they are they are really positioning this for award season. It's also going to be at the 81st Venice International Film Festival, but it's competing for the Golden Lion uh, there. And uh, they said that Lady Gaga is all already going to be campaigning for Best Supporting Actress uh, all awards. Oh, season. my goodness. Aren't they um, confident? Yeah, they are very confident. So, um, you know, it's interesting because, like, that first movie did not get universal great reviews. It was very polarizing critically. Yes. I think it's in the low 60s on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Um, but I don't but know. But it got really awards love, too, right? Yeah, like it got a Best Picture those, nomination. Like, yeah. Black Sheep, and then it won a couple. of one for Score, and a one for and Joaquin. Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, so... I, like, I love that movie. And derivative as Martin Scorsese movies as it is, it is a great yeah. standalone movie. Yeah, um, I I love the trailer, and I'm glad that it. I'm glad it is going all in on what it's intending to be. Which I yes. kind of I'm I'm still like trying to figure out if this is just like a kind of crazy fever dream that they're all having when they're all locked up, or right. if this is really, or if this is really what's going on like in the real world. I mean, like but, I'll say this movie does a better job at making you guess which is which. Like I'm clearly some of these bombastic things that are happening must be illusions, but then right. Knowing what we see in the first one, there's still lots of crazy real world stuff that happens uh, in the first Joker that make me think these could legit be scenes. Who knows if he's going to escape the asylum, if he's yeah. going to be manipulating things from the inside. Anyway, it, it it was more ambiguous, which I thought was not what I expected, but was a good contrast to that first trailer that where you can clearly yeah. tell what are what's in his head and what's not. Yeah. I it's agree. more Brendan Gleeson speaking roles there too. So yeah, cool. some of that was there yeah. too. Um, and uh, Lady Gaga said that she is not quite singing like herself in this movie. Like this is a character, so she tweaked her voice a bit. I'm sure that's more of like an artist yeah. thing for her. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, she uh, and then Joaquin Phoenix said that the first time she heard him sing, she spit out her coffee because she was surprised that he could actually carry a tune. So she like, did a spit was, take, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, there's some. Um, there's some, I mean, I think I think Lady Gaga wants an Oscar for acting so bad. Oh, and I don't mean I, and I don't and I don't mean this in a bad way. She's a good actress. Like I think she's done. I mean, across I, I won't count American Horror Story because I didn't really like Hotel, but um uh in A Star is Born and House of Gucci, I think she proved herself immensely as an actress. So I yeah. think she's very good. But I think she I really wants, I think good. she really wants that award. She's like really Bradley bad. Cooper, where they both really I know. Won and they and both she, try she really has hard, one. and they're both good. She, she has one for the music. She has one for the yep. song she did. She's for got the Star trophy on the table somewhere. But she wants. She, she wants the. She, she wants the acting one though, and I think they're already like kind of setting this up to, you know, for her to like at least be in the running. On the note of her, one interesting detail I noticed in the trailer that I, I don't know if I'm just overthinking it or if there's more to it, but I had the subtitles on in the trailer. And when her character was speaking, it had her name before her actual lines in the subtitles, and her character was 
quoted as Lee, L E E. And I thought, is that short for, at first I thought, like Harley, like Harley, I guess. But like, that's not how her character's name is like uh, traditionally spelled. It's L E Y. But I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. you could abbreviate Harley as Lee for sure. But I thought that for her character to be, and to have that name, that credit, and not just Harley or any other thing, just Lee and not spelt the same way. I'm like, is this just like a YouTube? Like, uh, like a, mis- like a mis- mis- like like a- misspell or something or typo. I'm like, that's, in- I just thought that's something worth mentioning. I don't know what's yeah, going on with that. But, yeah. I do think it's cool that she won't be playing the role like Margot Robbie. That's all we do though. That it's going to be a different take than Margot Robbie's. Thank Harley God. Quinn. Like Harley Quinn. It. Yeah. Cause Harley, cause Margot Robbie's and her take is good. It's more like the, it's more inspired from how she was introduced on the like Batman the animated, animated show, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. So yep. she plays it. She plays it as you know the inspiration was meant to be played. I think her interpretation is great, but it would not yeah. fit the tone of Todd of, Phillips' of this, movies. Of, of, of no. Yeah, like Todd Phillips even said that we're not gonna. You'll never see his Joker become like the crown, like the clown prince of crime. That's not. He's not even he's close to. to right. Yeah, that's not even close to that. So yeah, you know, I think it looks good. I'm finally sold on it, and I hopefully everyone else will find out on October fourth when it yeah. comes out. Looking forward to it. Uh, this trailer was a surprise. This next one, I was I didn't know we were getting it. Uh, me either. When we got, when we got it, I, I didn't even car, know this was the, the title of this movie. Me either. I knew that James Mangold had been working on a Bob Dylan biopic for like what feels like years now. Like definitely, I think yeah. it was announced after Ford v Ferrari came out. I feel like uh, it was. Oh, it was just, announced. Yeah, it was announced in uh 2020, 2020 that James Mangold would be writing oh, and directing before it. Before that, oh wow. So like, so it's been four years. Uh, yeah. And uh, that, yeah, I'm a sucker for musical biopics, especially the ones, you know, the less like Hollywoodized ones like Bohemian Rhapsody, which I actually do really like that movie for all its flaws, but like <laughs> Walk the Line, which James Mangold also did. Yeah. I'm, like big yeah. fan of that movie. Love stuff in that vein. Like the smaller stories of the humble beginnings of like, you know, musicians that go on to have great careers. I think those stories are really interesting. So yeah. this is already something I'm really interested in. And I, it's kind of, I've not even really been thinking about it. I've just kind of been waiting to get our first look at this movie. Now that we have it, I got to say Chalamet, if that's his actual voice is like doing the song. Apparently it is. Oh yeah. my God. I was like, dude, like it's, you could tell it's somebody impersonating Bob Dylan, but it's a damn good impersonation. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I was impressed with him. The movie is a complete unknown. Uh, directed by James Mangle, like we said, uh, based on the 2015 book Dylan Goes Electric. I guess the movie, the primary focus is about the cautionary surrounding the the switch to electrically amplified instrumentation by Bob Dylan. That's the focus of the movie. Um, I've heard mixed. You know, I actually think he sounds. I do agree with you that it sounds like someone impersonating him, but it sounds close enough that I was yeah, like, I thought it was good. I, there are some people that don't. There are some people that don't think he sounds like him at all. There's some people that don't think he looks like him. I think. I, I think in passing enough, he looks like him to like where I'd be like, ah, oh, I, I can't think of anyone else who could play him. Like I've that. never like, seen a young Bob Dylan photo before. I uh, don't have any opinion. <laughs> it's an, it's enough that I mean, yeah. like a, lo- a lot of people that play these characters in bio, like Jennifer Lopez didn't totally look like Selena, and uh, you know Angela Bassett didn't totally look like Tina Turner. Taron Edgerton doesn't completely look like Elton John. So no, like, yeah, but yeah, you're not too. gonna like you're not gonna get like uh, 100 percent spot on. But I think he looks the part. Um, I think he might be uh, up for an Oscar nomination for this. There are some people that think he's deserves this nomination more for doom part two but i don't think i don't know if that's happening uh, for that. i don't know I if don't... that's the, the role i mean yeah he's great yeah. as paul atreides i just don't know if that's an oscar role this feels like one that he's like more actively going for it but i don't know i i really think this is a great time for timothy chalamet to have a role like this especially with his crazy dune schedule and everything else that he's working on yeah this is a really i think going to be a great and this is all really early i could be completely wrong but it's shaping up to be like a great role for his career at the right time i think this is a good thing for him to tackle yeah another and example I really like of, him another example of this generation of hollywood really being like the new big crop of people to look at and pay attention to, to like the work that they're doing exactly um, I mean, I mean, I mean, if award season alone for that that little Dune squad is going to be pretty good. If oh they get, yeah, like, they're going to be like not, not even if it, yeah, not if they just re, not even if it's just like Dune being nominated. I mean, you got Zendaya potentially with Challengers. You got Shyamalan with Dune and this movie potentially. I mean, there's a yep. lot of uh, and then of course everyone else in that movie. Like if I don't know, there's a lot of potential for that section of young Hollywood to show up big. Florence's Florence Pugh's role in We Live in Time. Time be Oscar. One bait um yep. 
Oh, and I also just like that this movie is doesn't appear to be like a big like a big showcase of his career, like a very Hollywood yeah, it's about this telling one of very, this. It's like this yeah. one specific time in like his career, which I think is a lot better than I a really like biopic. that approach to a biopic more so than a big grandiose spectacle like multi-million dollars into the marketing of it like there's just a way that it's being marketed that i think is just more of a story it could be any musician it just happens to be bob dylan's story and i just like that oh um but oh, this is just in sorry i just got an email from uh the variety i just saw yeah to go back to go back to we were talking about the paydays for uh the avengers movies with oh the boy Bruce. um according to variety marvel is paying 80 million dollars for the russos to direct two avengers movies and they said significantly more for Robert Downey Jr. to tackle Dr. Doom. So there you go. There's their paydays. <laughs> so even, let's, even if you just match Robert Downey Jr.'s salary to the Russos at 80, so and we already know it's more because they just said it. So that's 160 to three people for two that's movies. Only, and that's just like, that's like, oh. that's part of the budget. And that's part of the budget before any production gets started. Oh <laughs> yeah. my God. That's and you know crazy. what? I didn't think to bring this up when we were still talking about it, just a quick aside, but um, Captain America four also has uh, reportedly asked oh, a budget, budget. Yeah. Too, because of its reshoots. And I heard like you know, upwards of $400 million. Dollars. I was like, that's yeah, man. That's that awesome. is uh there's a it's lot got, riding. It's got, some, it's got some work to do. Like what if this doesn't pay off? Like, I think this is really a, Oh, a hail Mary. I meant to it is a hail up. Mary. Yeah, I meant to bring that up when we were talking about his casting. That's the the where I was thinking about it earlier today, and when we were going to be talking about it, I was like, "Yeah, that's what it feels like," and it really yeah. is. If this pass doesn't get caught, oh my gosh, we are they are in uh, quite big the big trouble. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry to interrupt that. that no, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this looks really good. The movie also stars Edward Norton, Elle Fanning, Monica Barbero, uh, Boyd Holbrook is playing Johnny Cash in the movie as well. Oh wow, I didn't uh, even know about so- his casting. So that'll be really cool. And it comes out in December. Uh, it doesn't have like a actual release date yet, but December of this year. Um, so that'll be pretty. I'm yeah. looking forward to Excited it. Excited for that one. Good. Actually, we liked all the trailers so far. Yeah, now definitely. we're on ter- the Terrifier 3 teaser trailer is very short. I think I'm, yep. cool with, I'm cool with that. Uh, it looks like it looks extra bloody, extra gruesome. Um, I can't remember if you if we'd ever chatted about Terrifier before. If you've seen, have you seen both? I like, yeah, I've seen both of them. I like, yeah. I like them because they're uh, pretty like diabolical those movies are yeah if like you want you, if you, if you like if you like your horror messy and i don't mean like in a uh like your crazy kind of way it's just like no, it's gross it's, it's like <laughs> they yeah the characters in these movies end up leaving in buckets like yeah this is some been, gore and it looks like we're gore. getting more of the same but like uh set around christmas time which yeah you know, and you know a lot of horror fans love a good christmas theme horror movie so, yeah True uh, that, myself included. Yeah, I'm down for it. I thought the teaser looked pretty good. Um, what did you think of it? It was everything I wanted out of a, a terrifier teaser. And again, doesn't really nothing plot related here. Uh, not like we're expecting dialogue from Art the Clown. No, um, we're just gonna, I, you're just getting images yeah, here. Some but, uh, pretty <laughs> cool, like flash images of some pretty mutilated people. Um, some past characters. Art looks yeah. great. I really liked his um his blood angels. Were pretty, yeah, pretty cool. cool. Yeah, it was. It, it's really matching the tone of the other two, and I'm sure that uh, Damien Leone, if that's how you pronounce his last name, I hope so, yeah, uh, is set to deliver. You know, um, I don't know if it's if he's looking to do more after this. Um, I think there's a. I mean, you can only do so much. I think that this would be a cool crowning achievement for the Terrifier, you know, series if they do crown it with three. But it's a lot of fun. I, as long as they keep making them good, I'd keep showing up for them i hope i get to see this one in theaters because the other two they were pretty limited release they didn't get to you they didn't even get Um, i don't even think i think with the second one making a little bit more money like than the first one did right might it might be able to but is there Um, enough of an audience for these do you think like i know like horror fans it's very niche it's very niche exactly i'm wondering if like a studio takes that that gamble open it more white Uh, right yeah i'm guessing no i'm guessing limited theatrical release but I yeah, I think so, dude. I think Terrifier two, Terrifier two made fifteen point seven million dollars on a two hundred fifty thousand dollar budget, though. So that's wow, okay, pretty good. So I mean, there's 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 room for it, but yeah, you're right. I don't know. I, I still think even with as popular as these have been amongst horror fans, I don't think they've gotten to the mainstream right as much. 
Um, but that movie opens on October 10th. Not much to talk about with the trailer, but it does look good. And actually, yeah. all these trailers, all these trailers, including the last one we're going to talk about, have done really well on our TikTok page. So thank you for that. Um, nice. Uh, so it's really cool. Um, before I speak on the second trailer for Speak No Evil, because I know I talked a lot of shit about the remaking this movie so soon yeah. after the release of the Danish movie. But it screened at Comic-Con. I got invited to. I didn't go because I was doing the stuff on Friday in Hall H. Oh, okay. And it screened at somewhere else over the weekend. The response has been like overwhelmingly positive. Like I was surprised. Like they said that it is, yes, like you should see the original movie, but they said it's very deranged in a different way. That it's okay. darkly, it's darkly funny in a way that the original movie isn't, and that James McAvoy uh, kills it completely in the movie. He's like amazing in it. Okay. One person said that they thought it was the best horror movie of the year. Now I don't want to oh, go like wow. So, but I'm still. Costly optimistic because I what I want to say about this second trailer, I didn't think it was possible. It gives away a lot. And I thought that first trailer gave away yeah, a lot. Uh, complaints and, I had about this trailer too. And what the second trailer did was gave away a lot just from different angles. And <laughs> I don't know, it just it felt like it felt almost like that first trailer, but yep. like but like just different aspects of different scenes, I guess. True. Um, and actually I didn't even think to rewatch the first trailer, but I did notice like similar scenes. It's telling the same story. It's like, yeah, okay, this vacationing couple, our leads are go to visit this, you know, other couple that they met on holiday and they end up being a little weird and maybe not all that's that they seem. It's really yeah. that I don't really know why we needed two feature length trailers for this movie because it didn't really reveal really anything didn't. additional, just more, you know, spoilers again, like, this trailer didn't do anything for me. I didn't care for it. It's not that I didn't think it was a well-crafted trailer. It's just that like I can't even justify this movie's existence with you know the original literally coming out less than two years prior. Yeah. No doubt going to be a better movie if you ask me. I really I haven't even seen it, but I really really want to. I, um, I could appreciate you if it. Should really see. It. I mean, like I I speak on this. Like I mean, I I'm encouraged by these good reviews for the remake. At least it at least it sounds like they're not just like trying to like. Just regurgitate out of like a you know a carbon copy of the original movie. Does that not but, what they're trying to do? Because that's what it's. Uh, I mean, me. I guess it does, but like the way the people are responding to, it, I guess it doesn't seem like that. But the but trailers do, think, do make it. Do you think the people at Comic Con though had seen the original? Because it, it, it's not uh, yeah, a very a popular point, movie. Uh, that's a good point. That's a good like, point. I was actually looking up the first, the 2002, 22 one, and it it only made like six hundred thousand dollars worldwide. Yeah, it didn't make a lot of money. It, um, it, it's been recommended and pushed to me on social media from like horror channels, and I I'm well yeah. aware of it. I've dived into the plot. It's been on a watch list of mine for a long time. I just haven't made the time to see it, but it's by no means a mainstream. Maybe in horror well, communities, but yeah, it's not I'm guessing these people have not seen the original, and I'm sure if you were to watch the back to back, you'd be like, okay, what like what was the point of this? Wow. Well, I I will stress that people should see the original movie because what. And I won't say I thought it was outright scary, but it made me immensely uncomfortable. Like, I mean, uncom and I think, yeah, and I, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I think that is another level, I guess, of fear too. That that was a whole vibe I had watching the original movie, and and there is also a real story that is similar to this, like uh, that I saw in like a true crime show where this vacationing couple meets another vacationing couple and it goes horribly awry and it, it's so like that real story was so dark and i know it's not like they didn't base it on that but that's what it reminded okay. me of so the whole okay. time i was watching the original movie i was like yeah this like well this something similar to this did happen this could happen if you're like on vacation with like why your, not <laughs> your, your significant other right and you meet i mean i you meet total strangers all the time when you go on vacation and depending on how willing you are to like engage with total strangers you know I've gone out of town before where we meet people and they're like, hey, like come back to our place and we're doing this and that. And one part of my brain is like, should I trust that? I mean, I'm with a few people, so I don't feel totally vulnerable to do, to do that, you know? Right. But like, there's that also that small part of you, like something could go wrong. We don't really know these people. Why are we going like away from the beaten path to go to their house? Like, so they're like, there's that aspect of the movie that works, I think. And I think that's why it makes it increasingly more uncomfortable because they're stuck in this situation where these people are clearly not who they sold right. themselves as. And but yeah, the original movie is really good. But yeah, I will, I'm really looking forward to it. I'll give you credit. I mean, like, but, I, but you always do that though. You always point out a good point that maybe the Comic Con crowd hadn't seen the original movie and they're just. I'm skeptical that many <laughs> of them had. Perhaps some of them, but yeah, no, I didn't. Uh, I just kind of sighed when we were covering this trailer. I was like, I, I, it makes me. You know what? It makes me want to watch the original. Like, I, I should. 
Um, but it's not that old, though. I haven't really had that much time to come across it. But I'm going to make the effort to see it soon. I mean, spooky season's right around the corner. Could be yeah. a watch I get if I, maybe if that, I schedule maybe allows. That'd be, maybe that'd be one we, we oh, can cover. Oh, yeah. I think you're on to something. Because like, I think like I think we're trying to – I think, of course, there might be some mainstream movies that we try to do for Tales of Horror. But I think we want to try – this year to not make them all like the typical ones that you that everyone's see every... seen 10 times yeah 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 yeah, 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 I, yeah. I think that's you a know, good approach you know last year we had to do it that way because we were kicking it off but you know this year we can do kind of what we want with it but yeah i mean if you're interested in the remake it comes out september 13th i am encouraged by the good early word but good thing my friend here kind of brought me back down to earth They're like oh they probably maybe they didn't see the original hey, movie. <laughs> i could be completely wrong and uh maybe it's genuinely good and james mcavoy you know he's got uh he's got a good track record with horror i did feel like he was giving me split vibes here i i just couldn't separate his yeah. like, weird facial expressions i'm like eh, it just gives me split vibes but i like james mcavoy he's a good actor it's just um yeah i think he felt i felt like he was overselling it a little bit but you know, it's yeah. a trailer. It's not the movie, so who knows? True. All right. Um, the next movie being blow through really fast. The I know you did that summer legacy sequel. Uh, looks like it has at least its new cast. Uh, we have Madeline Klein, who is the star of Netflix's Outer Banks, which is surprisingly good. That's like a guilty pleasure. I don't know why. Oh, I okay. It, but... <laughs> it was very popular amongst um, my friends over uh, here. Yeah. And then um, she, and if you, you might also recognize her from Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery, she was in that as well. Camila Mendez, who played Veronica on CW's Riverdale, is also, uh, they are both in on talks for lead roles. Also in line is Tony Award nominee Sarah Pig, uh, Pig, uh, Pigeon and Atlanta's Tyreek Withers and Jonah Howard King, who played Prince Eric Eric in Disney's live action remake of The Little Mermaid. Mendez actually makes sense because she was in Do Revenge and the person that co-wrote and directed Do Revenge also is doing the same I, and i know you did that summer so that oh, um, makes a lot of sense and also sarah michelle geller had a cameo in do revenge she was in the original i know you did that summer but Ooh. she cannot be in she could not be in this one oh, because, fair enough yeah because you know <laughs> over over 25 years spoiler she died in the first one uh, <laughs> but i think you got that from watching i still know you did last summer that she is that yeah she was she died um Jennifer Love Hewitt and Freddie Prince Jr. are still in talks to be in the Legacy sequel. Now, someone's everyone online when they announced this, they were like, they were like, if Jennifer Love Hewitt, Freddie Prince Jr., even Brandy, from my still deal this summer, if they are not in it, they don't want it. So, okay, <laughs> so loyal Freddie fan Prince, base there. Freddie Prince Jr. I guess yesterday said that, hey, like I have been talking to them about it. We are in active talks, but he's very like he's like until something's signed on the dotted line, I can't say that like. I'm definitely in it, and right. but he's like, but he's like, I am in conversations with him. And Jennifer Love Hewitt sounds more like more on board uh, so okay. far. Um, you know, the more I hear about it, I mean, I I do kind of I I did like Do Revenge actually. It's a really well written kind of throwback to like the Cruel Intentions kind of vibe of like late '90s teen movies. Okay, and it's really smart. I think I mentioned this before when we talked about this movie. I don't get legacy sequel vibes from this franchise. It's not scream. Like so, you, don't get, I, you don't get vibes that like it needs one or that it has the no like, that the it, fertile that, ground one, one one that it needs one yeah both yeah <laughs> that. Okay. I, I don't think it has the foundation to be like let's make a legacy sequel to it like I said the first movie is a good solid like murder mystery for sure uh, kind of like a throwback to like what um the movie prom night was in the eighties like it is a it does have slasher movie like kind of uh like dna but it yeah. is more of a it's more it's more suspenseful than like the sequel is a slasher movie through and through and it's stupid and you saw that yourself <laughs> but um correct <laughs> but, but the first movie at least uh, tries to be something a little bit more than that um but there isn't enough like julie james is not sydney prescott so like jennifer right. hewitt's character doesn't have the same you know there's no, need to, there's no need to uh, nothing against jennifer Love hewitt she's you know, and she's she's fine in the first movie. I think she does the best she can in the second one. You know, there's not a lot for her to work with. Right. Um, and then Freddie Prince Jr., you know, just there in both of them. So I, I don't, I don't, it's not. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm not really pining for, a, I don't know what they're going to do here, with, yeah. what the story is going to be. I almost like, not that I would campaign for a remake, but I feel like it's more, it would make more sense. It would be more due for a remake than a sequel at this point. Yeah. Um, but you know, they've already, I think they've already actually have a release date for it, so they have to get started on this soon. It's supposed to hit screens sometime, uh, and oh, July, oh, yeah, 2025. 
So there we go. Oh, thanks, thanks. <laughs> so, so, a year. So, oh my goodness. So, so they, they got to get this thing done right away. Yeah, uh, and then, that's alarming. Uh, and then an interesting other bit of casting news, uh, just because I think Zach Efron is making some interesting choices. Uh, he's going to be working with A24 again in a movie called Famous. It's a thriller. Uh, Jody Hill is attached to direct. Uh, Efron will take on the dual roles in the film, portraying both an overzealous fan named Lance and a Hollywood heartthrob named James Jansen. The film is based on the acclaimed novel by New York Times bestselling author Blake Crouch and is adapted for the screen by Chad Hodge. It says... Um, the film follows uh, Lance, who has one asset that's about to change his life. He has the face of a movie star, and not just any movie star. Lance is the spitting image of a Hollywood icon, James Jensen. Lance is about to travel to Los Angeles to make his dream come true. Lance is going to be famous no matter what it takes. That actually sounds pretty interesting. Uh, that sounds really <laughs> cool. And A24, sign me up. I like that premise. And Zach Efron um, in the dual role, that's a pretty Yeah, cool I've, actually, I've actually been down with a lot of stuff. I mean, uh, some of the if he comedies as high, I, I tried to sit through that family affair movie with him and uh, Nicole Kim and I fell asleep. Maybe I was just tired. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, that kind of, that uh, kind of just came and went, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It was number one on Netflix. Like most things are for a week. And yeah, then, exactly. But, um, but you know I, they I, those numbers, but I think the dramatic stuff that he's choosing to do is very interesting. And I, this sounds really cool. And, you know, he already did uh, work with them on the iron claw and earned some of the best reviews of his career and gave them one of the highest grossing movies of their, uh, studio life too so that i think that's nice. really cool uh, oh, it sounds interesting I, though I'm, I'm down for it i'm here for this partnership yeah and then in other casting news we don't know a lot about this movie but the casting is pretty good josh o'connor who we you recognize from challengers yes. uh, uh he is joining steven spielberg's mysterious ufo movie emily blunt is also uh in the movie as well now they said this is a two-hander so uh, that means that Emily Blunt is taking on the female lead and Joshua Connor will be the male lead in the movie. Um, and that's all they're really saying about it is that it involves Juliet Pose and that he's working with uh, Steven Spielberg is reteaming with the Jurassic Park screenwriter David Co-op on the movie as well. Wow. Um, and it's coming out on May, May 15th, 2026. Uh, someone said during the IMAX Investor presentation, there was a movie place on the May 2026 Universal schedule entitled The Dish, and they think that could be the name of the movie, but that's not 100% certain okay. yet. Well, we well, don't that, know, that so we don't know fitting. anything about it, yeah. but we know it's Steven Spielberg, sci-fi, UFOs, Emily Blunt, Jim, uh, Josh O'Connor. So, I'm also interested to see <laughs> Steven Spielberg kind of go back to his early sci-fi route roots. Yeah, Pretty so that'd cool. be cool. I mean, he's done the, he's done the kind side of that, Close Encounters and ET, and he's on the violent side of it with War of the World. So we'll see what uh, yeah, what route what route he takes with this one. I like the castle. Josh O'Connor is a really good actor. I mean, he's also be in the next Knives Out movie as well. So that'll be right. Cool. Yeah, we'll true. See. Look at him making and Emily, for himself. And, em, and Emily Blunt is good and everything. So I'm down That's for right. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Uh, I've been, yeah. been wanting to ask you about this next bit of news because I, when I saw it, I, I immediately thought of you and like what you thought of it. Um, yeah, uh, I actually forgot I did. This is really <laughs> how I read this at some point. Uh, and then when you threw it in here, I said, oh, I realized I completely forgotten about it just with yeah. the, you know, the humdrum of life over the last week and a half or so uh, in a violent nature sequel in the works. We just chatted this movie not long ago as we'd both seen it. Uh, I think we both liked it. Uh, agree. Yeah. We both liked it. We had, you know, shared a lot of things that we liked about it in our episode. Um, yeah. Sequel material though. Yeah, I don't not, know. Not not my first pick for this. I I I I think prequels cool for this series or for this yeah. IP. Well, I don't know. Let know. Well, let me What's know that? what you think about what the producer said when they Okay, the, yeah, they I revealed, haven't heard this much, so. What they when they revealed that they were going to be a sequel. They said Alien Fire Nature was originally conceived as a meta sequel within a fictional slasher series, so we were always imagining mayhem beyond the scope of the original film. That we now have the opportunity to continue following Johnny on his restless walk has us feeling incredibly grateful to our incredible partners at IFC Films and Shutter who believed in Chris's vision from day one. We are thrilled to return for a new chapter and are excited to deploy Johnny as a conduit to further experiment in the genre. Okay, um, well, half of that I like, half of that I don't like. I, guess <laughs> I like how he said if the, if they genuinely are trying to experiment within the horror genre or slash or subgenre. Yeah then that's cool because I don't think we can do a second movie of him just of the camera walking through the, Johnny walking yeah. through the woods. And, but it's his comments about him doing exactly that earlier in that quote, make me alarmed because 
this is something that's a pretty cool novel concept. I think it separates itself from virtually every other slasher that came before it, and that works once. I don't doesn't work that twice. For a yeah. second movie. No, it didn't even work for a lot of people once. So right, it worked um, for us. It worked for people who are like into like oh this kind of like artsy kind of fartsy like yeah take on, like, like different take movies. on the slasher. We haven't seen any regular like regular before. regular folks did like did not like this at all. <laughs> they no some I, I most people thought it was boring. And so, I'm not I mean, climbing back to see the same more of the exact same. I like the first one. I'll go back to it eventually. But what's the sequel? The sequel's got to innovate, and if they but. But what else do you do if you don't make it in the style of the first one? Like, do, do you think Johnny, like that character, that slash yeah, villain, so, needs? So it's more? weird. Like, you can't, you can't, you like it's one of those things where you can't use the hook again because like that'll be tired. But then if you right. don't use the hook, then it's just a regular slasher movie. If you don't, and use what the hook. separates it right from the yeah, others? Yeah, yeah. So, so there's like, a challenge I mean, there, and I'm interested to see what they do about it. So yeah, I wasn't surprised <laughs> that this is happening, but I didn't necessarily wasn't clamoring for it either but whatever it's yeah. whenever a horror movie makes a little bit of money and it did make some money based in relation to its budget so yeah here you have it all right now we got box office we're gonna wrap things up here pretty soon uh we can tell you how much deadpool and wolverine made oh, i um, have not heard these numbers yet and i was looking back at our predictions from our last episode oh yeah this are... is when we did the 10 million like uh uh, gap million, right gap, yeah right? so um i don't know the numbers yet but i know from looking back at what we had predicted uh i went between the 180 and 190 million dollar mark and you right. went to the 190 to 200 million dollar mark and i heard you say earlier that it uh what did Broke it break records. some records yeah so yeah what does so, it end up so i won i won this week uh but clearly so, originally it was estimated to have grossed 206 million dollars over the weekend and then the actuals came out today, and that went up to 211.4 million opening weekend. It is the fourth biggest opening of the MCU and the sixth biggest opening of any movie of all time. Um, uh, so Did you say sixth that is the biggest pretty, opening, yeah, of all time of any wow. movie, and, and the fourth biggest MCU uh opening, which goes to show you that a lot of the biggest openings are MCU movies in that uh club of yeah. uh. And uh, it made 444.5 million globally on its opening weekend. Um, wow. That is just insane. Um, so kudos. I mean, I, that, I mean, that's good for the industry. And like someone else pointed out that Marvel has kept the industry af afloat with the grosses from its movies. And that's true. I mean, you can't really deny that. So, right. Um, I did not see it on Thursday. I was working on other stuff. So I'm seeing it tomorrow with my brother, who actually oh. already saw it. He saw it already. Uh, I was all I was this close to seeing it tomorrow as well, but yeah. I'm too far behind in House of the Dragon, and I got the boys finale to get in there, so that's what uh, I'll be spending my Tuesday doing. I like your I like your priorities on that. That's good. Oh, I got my priorities already. Right. I've <laughs> already I can't have too many more things get spoiled for either show. It's pissing me off. Yeah. So I need to get those in before I just uh, don't need to even watch the episode. So what I'll probably was, end up seeing what I was able to avoid, um, even though I was there. Ryan Reynolds brought out almost every person that has a cameo in Deadpool Wolverine onto oh, the stage cool. at, onto the stage at Hall H on Thursday. And I didn't know who they were, thank God. Uh, but I know that Deadline and Variety posted a full article about who they were. And I don't know how cool wow. that is the day before the movie opens. Uh, but why did they do it. that? They did it anyway. Um, oh boy. So, so there you go. Um, Twisters actually fell 56%, but that was gonna, that was obvious that was going to happen. It still yeah. is doing pretty well. Uh, it's made 154.6 million uh, so far domestically and 220.7 million worldwide. So it's going to make a nice chunk of money. Long Lays is the highest grossing independent horror movie in the last 10 years. Uh, oh, let's it's, go. It's, it's made 58.6 million dollars. Another 43.4% uh, drop, so less than 50% again. This weekend, um, it top talk to me, uh, which came out uh, was that last year? Jesus, yeah. Uh, uh, as the uh, so talk to me made forty eight million in August. Uh, I think in August, uh, Hereditary was on that list as well. It made forty four million. Uh, Insidious Chapter Three was released by Focus, so that was considered independent. That made fifty three million by the end of its run. So it's top all three of those movies to become the highest grossing independent independent horror movie of the last 10 years. It's also Neon's highest grossing film domestically, topping Parasite's 53.2 million uh, final domestic gross. Couldn't be happier uh, for that movie and the hit that it became. And happy to say that three of those movie ticket sales came from your boy himself. So oh, there you go. Seen it. 
And all on a very slim $10 million budget. Everyone at Neon must be so happy, and they must be so happy about their future move. I mean, does that give Cuckoo a chance to, like, make some money? That I mean, like... I think so, yeah. Like, Neon might be, like, the... They're going to have, like, a competition with A24, I think, when it comes to... I think they've been in that, honestly. A24, when it comes... Well, not even, like, critically, because... Neon has the last five Palm Doors at Con, so like that's yeah. pretty impressive. But I know A24 does rake in a lot of Oscar nominations and even wins, probably more than Neon. But all right, so we have to. We do actually. I, I actually didn't think we had a movie to predict this weekend, but we do. Uh, there is uh, uh, M Night Shyamalan is opening his movie Trap with Josh Hartnett. Early <laughs> word. Early word on the street is that the movie is pretty good, and Josh Hartnett gives a very, very good performance in it. I actually am very interested. In, I know M Night Shyamalan's hit or miss, but this actually does look like a pretty good, interesting. Was his concept. last movie old? Yes. Which no, I have not the, seen. No, no. Sorry. Oh, Knock at the, the Cabin. cabin. Right, cabin. right. I felt like it wasn't that long ago. Which I was kind of hit or miss on. This thing's about not liked. This, this actually has interesting. Decent, it looks good. I think the trailer was pretty good. And like they, I, know, I know people were upset that they gave away the hook that he he is the serial killer, but I think there might be well, more going on. I think there's more the going on too. And uh, some people have put out theories online, and I'm like, it's gonna be pretty bold for some of these to come true. And I don't know how we'll be able to work that out throughout the runtime of the movie if some of these things that people are hypothesizing end up coming to light. Yeah. But I, I in typical M Night Shyamalan fashion, there's gonna have to be a big twist in there for him to leave yeah. with one as big as uh what we know from the trailer. Um is yeah, I think there's gonna be a couple of really cool uh, twists and turns waiting yeah. for those who end up seeing trap. Yeah, um, but yeah, so far the early word is pretty good. So the low end for this right now is 14 million. I'm guessing the budget on this isn't too big either. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to see if I can find it anywhere. Um, and the high end is 20, and that's gone yeah. up after uh, the the early word that the movie is actually pretty decent. Okay, you got any numbers floating around or? You know, I, I feel like this Josh Hartness Hartnet Assance. <laughs> um, it seems like it's a pretty. Uh, it's pretty sizable. I think people literally are happy that he's like working actively again. Yeah. And, like uh, really like behind his stuff. And and even like even when in my Shyamalan was like putting out clunkers, he still was reliable opening weekend at least. Um True. so I love uh, a good twist. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna mock I'm gonna match the high end, go full like 20. Ah, see, like I had a lower number in my head, but if it breaks expectations, then I lose by default by going less than 20. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of like, but then again, it might falter. I mean, it's got Deadpool and Wolverine weekend two to compete with. Yeah. Uh, a strong uh, third week, probably from long legs. Uh, and it's not been that long since he put out a movie. So I'm going to prices right you at 19. Sorry. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Damn. All right. Cool. So if it does less than the uh, high end for uh, the prediction, then it goes yeah. to me. And if it uh, beats expectations, then it's in the bag for you. But I think I've been all, winning the last like three weeks. Yeah, you're on a long. pretty good streak. So I got to come back here. But uh, all in all, I'm happy. I want his movies to do well. You know, original yeah. horror storyteller. So I want nothing but success for M. Night Shyamalan. I'm hoping this is one that we can say is in the top half of his filmography when it's all said and done. I don't yep. know really that I'm going to go make the time to see it. Hopefully I do, but I got a really busy If I have uh, if I have time Thursday, I'm going to do it, but if not then it's, I do want to see it though. I I think it looks good. Yeah, um, I, I think the, I think the hook in the trailer is really cool. Yeah, yeah. Um I actually was sent Oh, I could probably send it to you too. I actually was sent Cuckoo at home. Uh to Oh, watch. cool. So, oh, uh, that would be so awesome. If, uh, so if you're not dying to go see it in theaters, then I can probably uh, send it to you. So it's up to you. All right, I'll let you know. Cuckoo, I want to yeah. see in theaters. Trap, I don't know, but Cuckoo, yeah. I really like the trailer for that. So, yeah. all righty, um, that's is that it. everything? I know. That's everything. I know it's like it was a long one, guys, and we had a lot to go over. And I'm glad yeah. that we had like a, we covered like all the news that was from last weekend Comic Con. So true. That's thank a you for, thank you yeah. for indulging us. Absolutely. Well, as Gay said, I guess this is uh, everything we have for you guys on episode 186 of Back of the Blockbuster. Thank you for bearing with us on a little bit of a longer episode than we're used to these days. But uh, lots going on in the uh, industry, news-wise. Um, great to recap, Gaius, what you got to experience at San Diego Comic-Con. It was great for me and I'm sure a lot of the listeners that uh, didn't have the time to tune in and see for themselves what was going on. So you were a great vessel for that, and uh, it sounded like you had a great time, a lot of cool venues and uh, stuff to look forward to 
that came out of that. So glad that we got to spend some time chatting that. Um, guys, uh, hope you guys enjoyed listening to us and break down some of the trailers from the last week. If you haven't had the chance uh, to check them out yet, I know a lot of them are on our social media, including our TikTok page, which you can find at our at our handle, Back to the Blockbuster. Uh, similarly, with anywhere else you guys might be active on social media, you can find us there by that name. Wherever you guys get your podcast, you can also find us there. Uh, I've been Jackson. He's been Gaius. Really appreciate you guys tuning in again for another episode of Back to the Blockbuster, and we'll see you on the next one. we still got some July anniversaries to pump up for you guys, so stay tuned for that, and we'll see you later. Peace out, guys.